Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together with some education. Uh, before we start, I saw a smart Muslim asking a question and he said, I don't know if he is still in the chat. His name is Lil John, Lily John. The Muslim, they use uh, names which is not Muslim names just to under like cover. And he said, who is the one who killed Jesus? Is it uh, the Jews? Or Satan or the will of God you know I find it very funny when a Muslim he's tried you know like trying to use his brain and this is what our topic today is about and I find it very silly and very stupid of them when they ask their questions because those questions are not merely meant to to be a question they are meant to play games but isn't your stupid God in the Quran <coughs> said that the Jews they said we killed Jesus <coughs> So why a Muslim is asking who killed Jesus when your stupid God say the Jews says we killed Jesus? And according to your stupid God, Allah saved Jesus from the Jews. So what the point of this question, who killed Jesus? Was it Satan? Or maybe it was the Jews? Or maybe God will? <laughs> So are you Mr. Are you there Mr. Lily? What an idiot. You know, oh, today our topic is about logic and it's funny I, when I find it that Muslims they start, uh, they try to use logic to understand things. But in the same time if we ask them, so what is the logic that Allah he saved Jesus from the cross but he did not save Muhammad from being killed by the Jews? I mean the Jews, they said we killed Jesus. Allah, according to Muslim, he saved him. The Jews, they killed Muhammad by putting poison for him. So why Allah did not save Muhammad, but he saved Jesus? And you know, here you see the question, for sure Muslims have no answer for it. And even the verse in the front of her does not even say they killed him not. He said did not kill him for sure. So even the stupid Muhammad, he could not confirm if he was killed or not, because all what it says, they killed him not for sure. You see the Muslims, when they when they say, uh, 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 you know, uh, when 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 you read the Quran, they stop here and they say it says no, it says they killed him not, nor crucified him. But it so was made to appear to them. But this is mean. This is what he's, this is what happened. <laughs> so you confirmed it, you idiot. You did not deny it. It was confirmed when you say this is what it might appear to them. So the nation who is a, you know, a, a, like a crowd of thousands of people, it was made to appear to them that Jesus was in the cross. And then and now you are telling them it was not Jesus. I mean, who is the donkey here? But anyway, let us go to our topic, which is Sheikh Asim. Oh, not Sheikh Asim. This is not Sheikh Asim. Where is the Sheikh Asim here? Sheikh Asim. Sheikh Asim, you know, he is an he is an awesome Sheikh, and actually he present what Islam is about. I mean, well, we have too many videos from yesterday when we open the page, they are still there. Let me close those things here. Guns and etc. <clears throat> All right, hold on, give me a second. I see. I have actually I have the link for the video we play. Look like it's closed by mistake, something like that. But we have it in the info because we give them a credit so they cannot complain and say oh copyright violation as usual. <clears throat> so let us open it here. In this video. Sheikh Asim, he will ask a very serious question. <clears throat> and the question is, 
can we use can we muslim use the the the, the person who's asking is a muslim can muslim use logic to refute atheist can we learn logic and this is the title of the video learning logic and philosophy to refute atheist secularist etc uh, Sheikh Asim, he come with the answer saying to you, first of all, you know, such a thing is, you know, uh, it is, you know, it is, it is not allowed in Islam. It's haram. It's forbidden. And as you see in the title in the front of you, I'm just using the the. Uh, the subtitle so they cannot claim copyright over anything you know even though we are using fair use but we know them so and then he gave him an example uh, that there is a scholar very well-known scholar his name is al-ghazali who did use philosophy in order to explain islam or to refute non-muslims but because he did that, he lost his compass. And Al-Ghazali is someone we hear Muslims always speak about him. Actually, uh, a long time ago, a bunch of Muslims, they made an article and they made a video to refute me, and they said Al-Ghazali. And then in two seconds, we found that Al-Ghazali is not a Muslim no more because he used philosophy and logic. But in this video here, he says, it is totally forbidden it, not because Islam cannot answer. Oh. You know but it's forbidden you know why and then he says to you because if you do so you will lose your compass logic is an idea but rather it is like you know you can watch the video and see it's very funny and very stupid but here we ask ourselves a very simple question as long as the muslim they don't agree with logic so why they come to us and they ask is it logical that god have a son As long logic and philosophy is haram, then why the Muslim they come and they ask questions and they question the logic? Well, none of them believe in logic. And in this video, this man he said that we as a Muslim we are slaves of Allah. Slaves of Allah, they don't ask questions. They are slaves. If your master he says to you, bring me that thing, do you ask him why? So we don't ask questions because we are slaves of Allah. There's other video here, and we have it in the in the in the info too. It says how to explain abrogated verses in the Quran for justification of you or using one's own logic. How we can justify the abrogation of the Quran? Did, didn't you hear what he said yesterday? He said that, and he claimed that, he traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem and then ascended to the seventh heaven and then came back to Jerusalem and came back to Mecca in less than one night. So this is the question the Arab, they ask Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in this video, the companion of Muhammad. Did you see your friend yesterday? He said he claimed that he went to the seven galaxies and he came back to Jerusalem and he visited Jerusalem and then he came back to Mecca all of this at night and then and this is the question why he is quoting this story because we don't go by logic this is not logical this, this is not logical so we don't go by logic the logic is, is it possible for a man who is sleeping in Mecca to go overnight, to go to the seven heaven, come back in the top of a flying donkey and go back to Jerusalem and then from Jerusalem he go back to, to, uh, uh, to Mecca? So the Muhammadan, when they speak about logic, they themselves, they get themselves busted because first of all, what is the point of this journey? Secondly, why there's no witnesses? 
Number three, if the Quran says that the journey of the angels take them 1,000 year to go there, the Quran itself says that it take the angel 1,000 years to go to heaven. And Muhammad was accompanied with the angel Jibreel. So he is, and when Allah, he speak how, how long it take the journey, he was speaking about Jibreel, because Jibreel is the one who go up and down. How long it take? Chapter 32, verse number 5. He directed the audience of the, from the heaven into the earth. Then it scandied into him in a day wherefore the measure of a thousand years of your rocking. So how it take for the angels to go up and down? Two thousand years. One thousand to go up, one thousand to come down. Wonderful. So how Muhammad, he went up to the seventh heaven and is taking him a few hours. You see, we are not going to use logic. I'm not going to use my logic. I'm asking the Muslims a very simple question. The logic of Allah, the reasoning of Allah is a stupid. Because he is the one who says it take a thousand years for the angels to go up. So how it take a thousand years for the angels to go up? And then it took Muhammad a few hours and he was in a company of an angel. Was Muhammad faster than the angel? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us on Skype? Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us on Skype? If you like to call us, feel free and don't be embarrassed. Remember, you have an amazing religion, supposedly, and it is have a strong logic. The guy, he went up to heaven, nobody see him. Anything Muhammad he do, nobody see it. Muhammad see an angel, nobody see it. Muhammad, he go to the first heaven and when he go to the first heaven, what he found? Can you believe it that the angels, they asked Muhammad, or they asked, sorry, Jibreel, who is with you? Not only that, they asked Jibreel, who are you? I never heard that a soldier, he did not know his captain. When Muhammad, he arrived with Jibreel to the, uh, the temple of Solomon, the Muslim, they call it Baytul Maqdis. Jibreel, he put his finger on the wall to make a hole. Why? Because he want to tie up the flying donkey. Look like Jibreel, he knew that this flying donkey is out of control. So if he let him free, he will leave. So what he do, he put his finger in the wall and he made a hole to tie up the donkey. But this donkey was sent by Allah. Look like this donkey is a wild one, the flying donkey. And then the story continue here. You will see that Muhammad, when he went up and up and up, he arrived to the first gate and the first gate and then second gate and third gate, fourth gate. And each time, he passed by a gate, they asked the same question. They asked Jibreel, who are you? Who is with you? Who are you? They say, I'm Jibreel. Who is with you? Uh, Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad, who was called? Yes, he was called. Open the door. Did you watch the movie, The Lord of the Ring? This is the same story where the angels, before they take him up to heaven, they have to make a preparation to be the first astronaut, astronaut man who go to the space. They open his chest and they brought with them a dish of gold full of faith and wisdom and they installed faith and wisdom in his chest.
This is as a preparation for the journey. And then after they install those wisdom and faith, it says here, I was brought, then brought to a white beast, which called Al-Buraq. Al-Buraq is coming from the word uh, like lighting. Buraq, uh, Barq. Barq is a lighting. Al-Buraq is like, is a beast supposedly. His name is from lighting. So he have the speed of light. Wonderful. Okay. That's mean in eight hours of a speed of light, we can go and see Allah. Not only actually eight hours, four hours. Because Muhammad, he went up and he came back and then he came back to Jerusalem and then he spent time in Jerusalem and then he came back to Mecca all this time will count so look like Al-Buraq in two hours he arrived to Allah so bigger than a donkey is smaller than a mule Muhammad described him uh, but as you see he's a physical donkey he's not just uh, you know he's not like a, a so he's a physical he's a real a beast its stride was long as I could reach I mean why why the stride is so long when the doki is so small if the guy is a if, if this donkey is a smaller than a mule bigger than a donkey why the stride is so long as the eye can re, could reach and then he says I was mounted on it and then we went forth till we reach the lowest heaven. Jibreel asked for the gate to be open. Here we go. The movie started. Guys, if you want to make a comment, and the comment isn't just a comment, have nothing to do with me, you are not asking a serious question, don't put my name next to it. Because by putting my name, you get my attention. And then I read it, you are not saying anything to me. I mean, why? Just share your comment, no problem. But don't add my name unless you are directing the question to me. So Jibreel asked for the gate to be open. And here we see the hilarious story. It was said, who is he? Like, what the heck? This guy Jibreel is going up, going down, going up, going down. And now the angels, they are asking, who is he? Jibreel replied saying, Jibreel. It was again said, who is with you? Like, what the heck? I mean, the angels do not know the most famous man, Muhammad. They are not watching YouTube. They did not watch the video of Zakir Naik. I cannot accept such, such a thing. The angels of Allah, they do not know who is he, who is with you. He replied, Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad, it was said, has he been sent for? Like, what the heck? Look at, look at this checkpoint. They have to ask all the questions. People, as I said, don't add my name next to your comment unless it is serious. As long as you are making comment for everybody to see, don't put my name next to it. Do me a favor. Don't force me to block you. So has he been sent for? He, Jibreel, said, yes. He, the prophet, said, then the gate was open. Well, shouldn't you call the high departments? Maybe this is not the true Jibreel. Maybe this is not Muhammad. Maybe it's a fabrication. Maybe it's, a, 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 you know, a, a, the Mossad. You know, what the heck? And then the story continued. They go to the second gate. And they ask the same question. So, what, but what, what the funny here, when Muhammad, he enter. Hey, by the way, Muslims, how long it took this conversation? You know, like, open the gate, who is with you? Uh, and why the angels do not know Jibreel? I mean, do, do he look like a monkey? I mean, do he look like what? I mean, how the angels could not notice that this is their boss? Who is going to go there? Like, is the first gate of the heaven is in the highway or somewhere like highway in the... Michigan or uh, maybe in Indonesia and there's too many traffic or Bangladesh the train pass by who is with you do we have any Muslim as long Muslim they don't 
like logic, we will not question logic. We will question just how stupid this story is. I'm not questioning the logic, but but why why the angels do not know Jibreel? Jibreel is the one who just came to pick up Muhammad from the from the earth. Ah, because Jibreel he left a thousand years ago, as the Quran says, it take the angels a thousand year journey. So now Jibreel he's older. He have a gray hair. So the other angels, they could not recognize him. You see, we keep asking people not to add my name next to their comment unless it is necessarily, but they keep doing it. Yeah. There's many people, they are qualified to be Muhammad here. Do we have any Muslim here would like to say anything? Is that because it took Jibreel 1,000 years to come back, so he changed? His hair, you know, he, he, he lost maybe his hair, like he looked like Sam Shamoon now? Huh? Maybe he came back to the heaven in the Halloween day? How the angels could not recognize, how in the world they are even asking him, who is, who is, who is this? I mean, don't the angels breed? he have 600 wings? Like, is it possible that around the gate of the heaven, there's a lot of insects, they have 600 wings flying? Hmm. We keep saying, don't put my name next to your comment. They keep posting my name next to the comment. Hilarious people. You guys remind me of Muhammad when he said, don't write the hadith. Anything I say, don't write it down. And they start saying, the prophet says, anything I say, don't write it down. I keep saying, don't put my name next to your comment. And they, what they do? They put my name next to their comment. Exactly like the Muhammadan. Look, look. The super intelligence, how it works. Their prophet, he just told them, don't write down what I say except the Quran. The Muslim, they write down. The prophet say, don't write down except the Quran. You eat it, he just told you don't write down. And those are the people here. We keep saying to them, don't put my name next to the comment. They keep doing it. Qualified to be Muslims, obviously. Weird people. Do we have any Muslim here have anything to say? Uh... Let us see. If you text me before, you have to text me again if you are a Muslim because I wasn't uh, online. <clears throat> I am Muslim. Why did you cut the verse? Okay, this is a Muslim. He's asking me why I cut the verse. That's a good one. He said the Imam is here. Come in Thursday. Let us see if the Imam is here. I don't know. Maybe he is not online.
Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to convert us to Islam? So the Quran follows followers are right, should not follow the hadith. No, no, you see. When the when Muhammad he said, don't write it down, he is not saying don't follow what I say. But the idiot, he is aware of how stupid he is. Obviously, in that moment, Muhammad he knew that he made a lot of poo poo. So he thought he can keep alive what he want to stay alive. If they write everything, then he cannot get rid of it later. So like if I say something now, and then I say something yesterday, and you say to me, oh, you said this yesterday, and here we go, this is what you say, and I, I wrote it down. That is an embarrassment. So Muhammad is trying to clean himself because he made too much poo, poo but he is not saying to them, don't follow. The hadith because the Quran ordered them to follow what Muhammad say regardless if it's written or not do we have any Muslim would like to join us live on air why the angels could not recognize that the one who is in the front door is Jibreel anyone knows And obviously this gate is a real gate. Somebody speak to Knight Templar in his language, tell him not to use my name, especially he is using a language I didn't even understand. All right, we have somebody, his name is a true Islam. I hope it's not Fakira. Let us see. He is not answering. Okay, let us see this one. We are calling. Hello? It must be. It, it, it must be Fakira, son of Muta. She changed her name. It's not Fakira no more. I don't know. I like you when you are Fakira. Sorry. Any real Muslim would like to call us? Very filthy mouth, son of Muta. Any brave Muslim beside this idiot who do not know anything about his religion he laugh at the hadith he laugh at the quran he called his prophet the mf word he was explaining to me why the prophet he broke the command of allah because he is an mf man go watch the video it's still there we did not delete it yet don't forget to download it share it everywhere do we have any brave muslim Anyone? No real Muslim here? If you know anyone, he is a sheikh. A real sheikh, you know, not like those kids. He is live on air. He have his own program, live now. He have a Skype. I'm willing to call him in his program. Uh, my friend, I answered you already. Why you keep repeating the same question? Why people repeat the same question tens of time? Uh, do you remember Mumu claimed the distance between the earth and first heaven? Yeah. Don't, you know, uh, hold on. He's asking a question have to do with the topic. 
Andrew, don't delete the comment unless he is, you see, I said a comment about, like just comment, have nothing to do with me. But if the question is meant to be a question and it have to do with the comment, then let it go with the, with the topic. Don't delete his comment. Uh, so yeah, Muhammad, he spoke about a distance of 500 years, right? But uh, 500 years between every level of heaven. But as you're seeing, this is a total contradiction for the Quran. The Quran says 1,000 year. But the Muslim, they say, well, no. The 1,000 year in the Quran didn't arrive to the seven heaven. They arrive where Allah, he stole, or store, sorry, he store the Quran in a tablet. According to Muhammad, there's a tablet. In chapter 85, verse number 22. And Allah, he put the Quran in that tablet. So the angels, they don't go all the way to Allah to get the Quran. No, they go and they read one verse or two verse, depending on what Allah want them to read at the time. And then they go down and they give it to Muhammad. However, this is still 1,000 year. So 1,000 year, not all the way to Allah. 1,000 year is to arrive here. <clears throat> Please, my brother Daniel Manta. Okay, why those they should call me, my friend? Are they Muslims? Why they want to call me? Do we have any brave Muslim here would like to speak to us? And why Allah, he wrote the Quran in a tablet? The Muslim, they will say to you, well, there it says preserved. That is very funny. So you preserve the Quran by writing it in a tablet? Why Allah memory is bad? Do you have a bad memory? And if you look and see how Allah, he wrote and where he put the tablet, he put it between the two eyes of an angel. His name is Israfil. The angel name is Israfil. And the tablet, Allah, he placed it between his two eyes. And the distance between his two eyes is the same as the distance between here and the sky. Daniel, he support Abdul Samud claim. Oh, Daniel is a Muslim. His warden will come. Hey, Master Daniel, please call me. All right, let's see this guy here. <clears throat> if the gentleman, his name is Daniel Anata. Hello? Hello? Fakira, maybe. Hello? Are you there? Fakira. <laughs> this guy is an have an obsession. You know, since we wiped the floor with his face, this guy, he cannot forget. That's it, my friend. You lost your honor a long time ago. You are not virgin. I cannot fix that. You know, the virginity skin is gone. No doctor can fix it. Go get angry as much as you want. People are dying laughing at you. Why I want to even talk to you? You are just a filthy mouth, and we use you only once as a towel. We wipe the floor with you, and we... You are not even worth... You see, there's some towels. You wash them, right? Because, I mean, still they can be used. You are not be used more. I, I, talk your, I took your calls hundreds of times. That's it. We are done with you, Fakira. Do we have any real Muslim word? This guy, Daniel, who like Abdul Samud. Why, my friend, you don't call me? You are from Indonesia, right? 
Why you don't call Abdul Samud and let us have a conversation? I will assure you that Abdul Samud, he will not stand two minutes. He will change his name later to Fakira too. Oh, he is not a Muslim. He is the best friend of Abdul Samud. How he can be a friend to Abdul Samud? Isn't it the Quran says, chapter 5, verse number 51, the Quran forbid the Muslim taking Christians and Jews as a friends or protectors. And if you do so, you are one of them. So my friend Abdul Samud is lying to you. This is the Quran, and I can show it to you in your own language. This is the stupid Quran. Oh, you believe, take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends or the protectors. So how Abdul Samud, he take you as a friend? He is lying to you. He's just lying to you, you know. Let us switch to the Indonesian language, Bahasa. Okay, and I will read it for you in the Bahasa language just to make you happy. So Abdul Samud, he's told you he is your friend. Abdul Samud is a scam. Hi, Orang Orang, young Beriman. Jangala, Kamu Mengalabi. Orang Orang, Yahudi dan Nasarani. Menjadadi, Menjadi. Beramemem, Beramemem. Mu Sabagati, Makaraka, Makaria. I mean, don't you see it? It says you cannot take the Orang Orang or people, you know, Orang Orang, you cannot take Yahudi and Nasrani as what? As a friends or protectors. So how is your friend? So call your friend, Abdul Samud. Tell him, Christian Prince, he smoked you without smoke. By the way, I don't smoke at all. I never smoke. The only smoke I do is Muslims. Which is very, it can be considered as a hashish in some places. What do you think? Uh, <clears throat> CP just quoted the hadith saying that they should write nothing other than the Quran. So why you refuse, refuse to debate them? Why you cannot defeat the Quran? We are doing that. Here we go. We are defeating the Quran. You know, it's not our fault that the Muslim, they believe in the Hadith. So don't be a smart ass. In Islam, if you don't believe in the Hadith, you are not even a Muslim. So when somebody, he tried to be a smart ass, he is simply an idiot. This is their religion. It's not up to me to design what is Islam. Islam is somebody believe in what Muhammad said and he obey what he say. The Quran says, not only you have to obey the book of Allah, you have to obey Muhammad. And that's mean whatever Muhammad he say, you have to obey. And that have to be out of the Quran. And this is why the Muslims, there is many things. It's not in the Quran. And even it's sometimes it's abrogate the Quran. But Muhammad said it. So the Muslim, they have to follow the, the, the hadith. As an example, the Quran says you do muta. Muhammad, he said, don't do muta no more. Which one the Muslim they follow? The hadith. So the Muslim believe that even hadith is more powerful than the Quran. So when I use what the hadith says about Muhammad saying, don't write down, it doesn't mean that Muhammad says, don't follow my hadith. He's just saying, don't write it down. In the same time, all the Muslims agree that you cannot be a Muslim. I can show you right now a fatwa. It says it clearly that the one who don't accept the hadith is not a Muslim. He is an apostate. The one who obey Allah and his messenger and the one who obey his messenger is the one who will go to heaven. If, if it's obeying Allah is enough, then there is no need to obey the messenger because the Quran is the word of Allah. And then there is no need for the rest.
Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us? Orang Orang. The only one is trying to call us is Fakira from Disneyland. She's a very, very hot lady. Can we call Sheikh Abdul uh, uh, Samud? Abdul Samud. Do Abdul Samud have a uh, have a Skype? Guys, do Abdul Samud have a Skype? If Abdul Samud have a Skype, give it to me. I will call him immediately. Let us wake him up. It's morning time there in Indonesia. It's what? What the time there now? It is. Uh, is it nine in the morning or it's ten? 12, something like that, I'm not sure. Seven? This guy is not, is not answering. So mad, Abdul Samud, I don't care. If you know their Skype, give me their Skype, I will call them immediately. If you know Skype of all those who they claim to be Ustaz in Indonesia or any country in the world. If you know the Skype of Zakir Naik, I will call him immediately. Get him, Prince. First of all, I don't use Skype. Secondly, I'm busy. Zakir Naik, how, how you jump in the broadcast? I'm not even, I did not even call you, man. How you can do that? Get him, Prince. We are Muslims. We are the one who came with the technology. What the heck? You are the one who came with the technology. Which one? Other example, it discovered now in China that it is, if you drink camel urine, it's very healthy. That is a high technology. So if you drink camel urine, you are very healthy. Exactly. So why you look like you are dead? Christian Prince, respect yourself. What are you talking about? Look at the mirror, man. Yours does bones. If I turn the fan on, you will fly. Christian Prince, I'm very skinny because I am a guru. You are a what? I'm a guru. You are a Hindu now? Christian Prince. I used to be Hindu, and now I became a Muslim, alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay, Zakura. Thank you very much for your help. Um, do we have any brave Muslim would like to join us live on air? Any Ustad? I mean, they call themselves even Ustad. Why? I have no idea. Now, don't ask me where I got this, uh, those stories from. You know, people, they say to me, do you write them down? No, my friend, I just tell you, here we go. What write down? Do we have any Muhammadan here? Anyone? If you have a sheikh, you know his Skype, I will be happy to call him immediately. And let us have, you know, a serious discussion with somebody who have knowledge. Let us see how people of knowledge, they can handle it. You know? What do you think? Do we have any Muhammadan? He have a Ustad? Ustad from Indonesia, from Bangladesh, from Malaysia, from Singapore from Emirat, from Bahrain, from wherever you wish. What do you think? Anyone? And remember, if you call me and you bring victory to Allah, Allah will give you an extra reward. I cannot even describe the reward for you. It's a lot of reward. English one. Who wanna get the English reward? Any Muhammadan? May they, may they, may they. So as you see, the Quran and the Hadith, both of them, they complete one story. The story, none of it, make any sense, and it contradict each other. And even when the Muslim, they get depressed, they say, "We don't accept the Hadith." Okay, do you accept the Quran? Do they even accept the Quran? Who is a Muslim here accept the Quran? They don't. The Quran said the sun set in the murky water. What the Muslim they say? 
No, 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 no. This is from the perspective of Zulkarnain. Like Abdul, did Allah say that word? Is it? Did Allah say in the verse? He saw it from his perspective and I am correcting him or he said he found it sitting in a muddy, boring water. They don't accept the Quran. Because if they accept the Quran, they will take the Quran as it said, not as they added. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. Where is that? Where is, is the sitting place of the sun so we can reach it, brother? You see, it doesn't say until the sunset time. That is a place. No, this is not a place. He said until he reached the sitting place of the sun. Okay, where is that? My friend, ultimate truth is not even a Muslim. And this is you and yourself. You are just posting. Nobody speak about him except you. Get lost. Ultimate fort. This guy himself, he just said the F word to your prophet. And he said the F word to all the Arab, which means Aisha and everybody. Hey, this guy is a very filthy mouth, donkey. Shame on you even to mention his name. You must, you know, like the only one who mentioned the name of this person is this person. Even Muslim, they spit on him. Especially after he said the F word is a prophet. So look what the Quran said. Enter when he reached the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting in a spring of a black, muddy, hot water. Where it says in the verse that this is was from the perspective. And then to confirm if this is what it's meant, we have even a hadith to support this story. Muhammad in the hadith he said that yes, the sun set in a muddy boiling water did muhammad get the hadith wrong too and is this hadith is weak no here we go even the muslim website says great sahih in chain which means nothing wrong with it very authentic i was sitting behind the messenger of allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting he asked do you know where this set? I replied, Allah and his apostles know best. He said, it's set in a spring of a warm water. So now we have the Hadith and we have the Quran. They are not contradicting each other and they are in total agreement. So why the Muslim, they lie? because it's an embarrassment. And now how the Muslim, they will refer to Christian prince? They will say this. It's mentioned by Uthman, bin Abi Shayba, from Ubaid, ibn Abdullah, from ibn Umar, ibn Maysara, from, 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 from Yazid, ibn Harun, from Sufyan, stop. Sufyan, everybody knows that he is from San Francisco, and he is a liar, and he is even voting for Democrat, and isn't he is corrupt, okay? So therefore, this hadith is not accepted. Like, what the heck? How you know that Sufyan is a bad boy? And if Sufyan is a bad boy, what about the rest? Why all the good names here, they accepted the bad boys? This is how they refute. And supposedly now they get me busted. Susu told Dudu and Tutu told Mumu and Mumu said to Fifi and Fifi said to ha 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 said to Kuku and Kuku is a big fat liar. Thank you very much. So as long it is a Kuku is making a poo poo, why it's there and why you say Sahih in chain and why you why it's in, in, to, in total agreement with the Quran? Was the verse in the Quran too is reported by a fraud? I asked a Muslim friend, he said, uh, murky water is a metaphorical of a space that's deep, guys. Murky water is a metaphorical for space. Did you say to your friend, the donkey, who said that to you, that he found next to it people? How it is in the space and it, there is next to people, people live there. He found it sitting in a spring of muddy water and he found near it people. This guy is in the earth. He is not taking a spaceship with Elon Musk. 
I mean, what is the intelligence? There's no intelligence these days. There's ice cream. Do you see he found near it people? He found what near it? He reached the sitting place of the sun. How that came with the metaphorical sitting place? Place, geography. He kept going, he kept going. It says here, we and we established for him in the earth. Where in the earth? What space? And since when the sun set in the space? That is new. Hey, son, where you go? I'm in the space, buddy. What do you do there? Playing bing bong. You play bing bong? Yes, I play bing bong. What is that? Bing and bong. Ah, this is where the bing bang is coming from. Exactly. Bing bong. So I play bing bong because simply the origin of the sun is coming from the big bang. Science. Focus with me on the topic now. We don't want to explain about how the jinn they became Muslims. Allah, He created. I mean, this is those stories are really horrible. Like the jinn are Muslims, your boy. And the jinn, there's a, there's a jinn Christian, by the way. There's a guy, he's a sheikh. He wrote a book. It's called An Interview with a Genie. And this book became so popular. I don't know if it exists in English. And in the book, it says that the, the Muslim genie, when we sleep, they go to our refrigerator and they eat the food. Sadly, my family are not Muslim, so I cannot explain to my mother who ate the baklava. If my mother was a Muslim, I just can't blame the genie. Actually, there is a there's a there's a Saudi family. They did sue the genie in their house. They filed a, a case for the court that their Muslim genie who live in their house is eating their food and there's many things in the house are disappearing. Obviously, their son is in drugs. So let me search for the news. Muslim Saudi family. I'm typing in Arabic. Hold on. Let us type in English. Here we go. This was 2009, actually. I don't know if they have new cases now. Saudi family sued, sues genie alleged harassment. <laughs> the Sharia Accord, the lawsuit filed to the Shari in the Sharia Accord that the genie is leaving them, threatening them, voicemail, stealing their uh, cell phones, and hurling rocket at them. <laughs> Unbelievable. The genie is doing that, and you take him to court. What the heck? Did you arrest the guy? He must have any update with the case. Well, why not? Muhammad told them that even once he captured one of the genie and he wanted to tie him up to the column of the mosque. But then he remembered Brother Sulaiman. <laughs> so he let him go. <laughs> uh, are you sure that this genie, his name is not Fakira? From Senegal? Who changed his gender from male to a female? Do we have any brave Muslim here would like to call us? Anyone? Any half one? There is a Muslim who called and he asked about the genie who is having sex with his wife. Hmm. Uh, 
<clears throat> look, look. Let me read for you a Muslim article. Jen who establish such a connection with women or young girls usually marry them and engage in sexual activities during which those women see and feel the jinn with whom they are interacting as a solid physical person as if it were a human male. However, as jinn do not have tangible physical body Inevitably, the following question comes to mind. A Muslim, he have a mind? I mean, look what the topic is about, and they say a question come to the mind. Can you believe it? Come to the mind? What mind? I mean, those who believe in those things, they have mind. Okay. How in earth, look, this is a Muslim question now, look, question, this is serious now. How on earth can jinn who cannot even become a completely physical manage uh, to satisfy a woman with physically human body? That's a good question. How you can satisfy a woman when you are not physical genie? Huh? Hey Muslims, this is a good question. So the woman now she is in bed and you are doing boom boom to her with what? Hello? And how your prophet he captured the guy, the genie in the hadith, if you don't have a physical body, you can't catch the guy. In such a conditions, the jinn stimulate oof, 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 oof. the center in the brain responsible for sexual arousal all scientists who work in the field of physiology look look we have science now scientists how we go the muslim they brought the scientists in the middle the scientists now they are there know very well that when electro shock is applied to the center center of the brain it is possible to make a person feel and do whatever you want what the heck the genie is using high-tech technology wiring do you think that the genie is using solar system too i mean this is an educated muslim trying to explain how the stupidity work and then in fact i love it when muslim they say in fact that because this is a fact in fact not always relationship between female human and male gen sexual relationship also take place between female gen and male human what now we know what happened with fakira she been brought by human sorry be, uh, genie male genie female maybe and now he became lesbo so Genie, they have male and female, and now they want to have sex with the human. My friend, why you keep talking about this stupid Andrew Tate? I mean, why you are interested in a pimp? Are you a pimp too? What is your interest in a pimp? Why you keep talking about a pimp? Why even you care for a pimp? What's wrong with you? A pimp, a pimp. Are you even ashamed to mention his name? Why you care? He's a pimp. Stupid people. People are really stupid, man. It's like a whore converted to Islam. This guy is not even a whore. He is the biggest whore. So why you keep mentioning his name? Because you are stupid. Because you have no, you don't have a belief, you don't have faith, you are just a stupid. You are a follower of a pimp, obviously.
Why you are even following his news? Are you a member in his website? He gave you free access to sex? Focus with us, focus. We have a genie having sex now. Something more important than your pimp. In fact, it is not always a brother. A relationship between a human male and genie, a human and male genie. Sexual relationships will also take place between female gen and male human. My, why, why those are not coming to me? Me. I'm single and those genie female are not coming. Where are you? Oh, hold on. I feel something. What the heck is that? No, 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 no. Please, please stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, it's a cockroach. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Man, I thought because something was like touching my, my foot and something, I said, oh, my man, the genie female just came right away. You know, I asked for it and here we go. It was a cockroach. Oh, cockroach, you know, it's shame on you, you know? What, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the winter, there's a cockroach in this cold? What the heck? So anyway, and then, of course, these cases, the common trait is that always a member of the jinn that forcefully initiate the contact with the human. It's a rape, brother. It's a rape. It's a rape forcefully you cannot even control it that's it the genie is going to f you you like it you don't like it you've been f the brother fakira simply i like it when they say simply look how simple it is he just told them you will be f falsely and simply for the purpose of fulfilling their selfish desire look look now they knew is inside the genie they never met one they never saw one and now they knew that this genie is selfish who can beat muslims in their intelligence now they are studying the physiology of the genie they're fulfilling their selfish desire me hey brother do you think Muhammad was a genie when he started raping women around? And he was desiring women to offer themselves as the Quran says so he can F them? Selfish desire? And this is a privilege for the Prophet? In general, people who have been forced into such position, what position, man? Don't speak dirty. Oops. Don't go there. Or marumful about these event take place without their con conscious consent your wife she is sleeping in bed genie in the top of her and he is doing what he is doing and the wife she is screaming and the husband he cannot do anything about it hey honey what happening what's happening uh, i'm not going to make the sound you know what's going on you know like imagine Zachary Naik, he woke up in the middle of the night and he found his wife, she is being <clears throat> by a genie. And then what he would do? Christian Prince, I need your help. What the heck? Zachary, do you know what the time now? It is 3 a.m. in the morning, buddy. Why are you calling me? Christian Prince, first you are a liar. It's not 3 a.m. for you, it's 3 a.m. for me. So how are we going to be 3 a.m. for you? I live in the different continent. Uh, okay, Zachary, I'm saying 3 a.m. in you in the morning. Why are you calling me now? I just found the genie in the top of my wife. And I want to help you. What? How I can help you? If I give me your big star, I can throw your face and he will run away. Zakir Naik, do you think I'm more scary than you? Exactly. Okay. Show my picture. Christian Prince, I just did. And my wife, she passed away. Shame on you. You killed my wife. You idiot. I don't know. why. You told me, give me the picture. I will show it to the genie. Why you show it to your wife? Because my wife, she thought you are the genie. And she wanted to... Okay, Zaker, just do the funeral and we will talk later, okay? <laughs> okay, just don't go now. Hang up, hang up. Zaker, it's okay, it's okay, you will be fine. You will be fine, man. I mean, one wife die, you have three left, and you can marry a new one tomorrow. Exactly. Thank you very much for inviting me, and I feel cheer up. Be the don't know, I forget I can marry four wives. You idiot, you forgot you can marry four wives, just get lost. So, brother, look how complicated the story here. 
Oh boy. Look, look at the scientific study. Hmm. The gin prevent people from acquiring knowledge about them. So how you want the road, the article, he have the knowledge. Like what the heck is that article, man? How he got this article? I mean, <clears throat> do we have a genie? Do we have any genie? Anyone? Any genie, he can make a Skype account and we can call him. Anyone? Look, look, I found a Muslim book in Facebook. All of it is about genie having sex with Muslim women. And how to fight the genie brother? You take a shot in your ass, which is Quran. Surat al-Kahf. <laughs> how you stop the genie from effing you? You read, brother, the chapter of the cave. If, 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 if. Ah, he is coming from the cave. Uh, supplication to Allah. Clipping nails and removing extra hair. Look, look, look how we can uh, prevent the genie from having sex with you. Listen, listen, listen. Supplication to Allah. Abundantly, especially during the last hour before the sunset. Before the sunset, you have to do it. Number one. Uh, this is number 10. We can go with number one now. Clipping your nails. What the heck? Removing extra hair. Where? What do you mean? Taking the ritual purification bath. Dressing finest clothes. What the heck? What the what is that? What is that about the genie now? Doesn't make sense. Hold on. Hadith of the day. Look, look, this hadith. How I can show it? Hold on. The the story it doesn't show. This is a very How we can show the whole story? Hold on. Let me see if I can save the image. And then we can show it on the screen. There we go. That's better. Brother. Emergency story. We found this in Facebook. I was laying down Al Ghaffari, Abu Dur al Ghaffari, what Tatra al Ghaffari, what is his name? He reported this hadith. I was, is, is, the, is the story showing clear? Is the text showing clear for you or too much or small? Let us see here. My father said, I was laying down on my belly in the mosque when, them, when someone shook me with his foot and said lying down in this way is disapproved by Allah I looked up and I saw that it was the messenger of Allah why it's disapproved by Allah to sleep in your bully anyone knows anyone knows why it is disapproved by Allah to sleep over your stomach in your belly what is the problem because shaitan will if you. Hello? Make sense? And look, they have a picture for you of a guy sleeping in his 
ما أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله It's haram. Haram to sleep on your stomach. Look like Muhammad was tempted by his ass. Any Muslim can tell us why it is not approved by Allah to sleep on your stomach? What if you are a turtle? <laughs> huh? Huh? What the heck is that? Why it is haram? Why? Who can tell us why? what is the problem? Why? Why really a problem, brother? What is the problem? Anyone? Why Allah don't like it? Let us find the hadith in the origin or the original website of the hadith. Let us close this picture here. <clears throat> and we go here and we love there. Hmm, we found it. The Messenger of Allah, he saw a man laying on his stomach. He said, Indeed, such a laying is not loved by Allah. Why? Who is a Muslim can help us and tell us why? What the problem? Any Muhammadan can tell us? I mean, you see, your prophet, he have a lot of silly, stupid stuff, man. Who is a Muslim can give us the reason? What, what, the, what is the business of Allah? Why, if you sleep on your belly, you are doing something Allah don't like? Anyone? And now the Muslim, they will start giving you health reason. Health reason. It's a health, it's not healthy. Any Abdul? Do we have any Muslim until now? Zero Muslim. Any real Muslim? May they, may they, may they. Just watch your mouth, man. Be careful what you say. Allah is watching anyway. Allah will punish you all. You know? I know someone, there's a hadith about someone he made fun of the miswak. The miswak is a, is, a, is a root, the prophet of Allah he used to use to beat his wife with it and to clean his mouth with it, his teeth. So this guy, he put the end of the miswak in his anus. Do you know what Allah he did to him? After seven months, brother. He delivered a baby, which is a rat. From his anus. And he died. True story. Who can deny that those stories are true? Let me see if I can find the story in English. 
some story says he gave birth to a rabbit. Uh, Your stories, by the way, all of them, they are, look, I found even, I found even a video about it. But anyway, if somebody have the book of Al-Bidaya and Al-Nihaya to Ibn Kathir in English, you can find the story there. Uh, let us see where we can find the story here. We will use Google Translation. Okay, here we go. Brothers and sisters, the one who made fun of of the miswak of Allah, this is what he will happen to him. And this is the parova in front of you, and there's a billion witnesses. So this is the book of Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, Ibn Kathir, variant number 13, page number 278. It says here that a person, you know, he, he is, you know, he is like, he don't care really, you know. He is from the Busra, from Iraq. And then they mentioned to him the Siwak, the Miswak they use, and how important it is. <laughs> he said, <laughs> you know, he said, there is no benefit of it, and uh, except in my, you know, his anus. And then he took the, anus, the, the Siwak, and he entered it into his anus. And then he took it out. And then after nine months, brother, he gave birth to a baby. He looked like a rat. He have four legs, and his head is a head of a fish, and his ass is an ass of a rabbit. Look at this details, man. Let me translate to you in English. Hold on. Be honest with me. Don't you like our stories here? Do you have any TV stations in any country? They can tell you stories which is amazing like this, except in Christian Brand's station? Huh? Nobody. So he is from the district of Al Basra, all right, and he was a reckless man. So they mentioned to him the miswak, and then he said, "By Allah, this is miswak is like this," and he entered into his anus. So he put it in his anus. The translation is not coming right, and then he took it out. Okay, he put it inside his anus and he took it out, and then. After nine months, then he gave birth to a son who is like a rat with four legs and his head like the head of a fish and he has an anus of a bunny poop. <laughs> True story. can defeat this who can fight this religion do you see what happened to you when you make fun of Allah teaching here we go you put the miswak in your anus you coward you filthy Allah will punish you huh you think you can get away with it and not only you gave a son to us, uh, give a baby, he's a man. Remember, he's a man, he's not a girl. He gave birth to a baby from his anus after nine months. And this baby have four legs. Not only that. You wish that this is the end of it. You just wish. He have four legs and his head like a head of a fish. Imagine... You have a son, he has four legs, and his head like a fish, not a shark. Can you see how painful the punishment? And not only that, your son, he have an anus like a bunny. Hey, by the way, Muslims, how the anus of the bunny look like? Huh? 
I just post for you for the link, by the way, for the book of Ibn Kathir. For sure, it's in Arabic, but you have to use Google Translation. Open it with Google Browser so you can use the translation. So here we see that Islam is a very serious religion and all the stories are true. But this remind me, uh, Muslims, but is it the Quran says that Allah, he threatened the Christians. If they don't believe in Muhammad, Allah will erase their eyes, their mouth, and he will make their face backward and their eyebrows. And yet nothing happened. I mean, they were making fun of Muhammad. And Muhammad told them, Allah told me this. If you don't believe now, Allah is going to erase your face. And we will make it backward. We will erase your eyes, your eyebrows, your mouth, your nose, if you don't believe right now. But nothing happened. Until now. So how come the guy who made fun of the miswak, Allah make him give birth to a rat, but the one who made fun of Allah and Muhammad, nothing happened to his face. Be honest with me, how many of you is now interested in Islam? Do we have any Muslim he would like to lead us into the faith of Allah? Do you see how serious the threat? I would like to see my face backward. At least I will not get a ticket if I'm driving wrong. The police will stop me. He will say, what the heck? Why you are looking backward? I say, you idiot. Allah, he punished me. Don't you see? He will make their face backward and he will erase their eyes and eyebrows and mouth and nose, and he will make their nose. Actually, you know what? Let us read the interpretation for this. Chapter 4, verse number 47, brother. Four. Forty-seven. Aren't you interested? Be honest. I mean, come on. Don't you want to know what Allah will do to you 1400 years ago? Until now, he did nothing about it. Me, look at this. Oh, who you've been giving the scriptures, Jews and Christians, and now the interpretation. All right. So even so, he warned them. It says here, he said, Ibn Abbas said, if facing here reference to blindness. Look, the Muslim, they try to give it their own now. Every Muslim, he give a different meaning. Blindness, oh, okay. فَنَرُدُّهَا عَلَىٰ أَدْبَارِهَا And turn them backward. What the heck? Meaning he will put their faces in their backs. That's deep. And make them walk backward. I saw that in China. They are doing sport people in the park. They were walking backward. I swear by Allah. And make them walk backward since their eyes will be in their backs. Like, what the heck? So what the friends going to make now? <laughs> we just turn. <laughs> All what we will do in the back, we became a front now, just to change the direction, you idiot. I mean, what the heck is that? <laughs> Similar was said by Kutada. This is make the punishment even more severe in the parable, in this parable, that Allah said for ignoring the truth, profaning the wrong way, turning away from the plain path of the path of the misguidance through such a people walk backward. Similarly, some said Allah's statement says, and he made in their necks. Look, look, look what he will put. He will put you in your neck a collar like a dog and a chain. Hmm? So their heads are raised up and we have barrier before them. 
That is a parable of Allah, the deviation, hindrance from guidance. Who can be this? Who is here for his first time in our channel? If you are here for the first time, I feel sorry for you. You better leave immediately because you will become addicted and you will come here for comedy every day. And the comedy will be nicer if a Muslim he call us. And that's why the Muslim didn't dare to call. Because they will know that will, they will make Islam look more horrible. And instead of defending it. This is the only reason they don't dare to call. You see, if it's somebody else who do not know much about Islam, the Muslim will be lining up to call you. You know, like one after one. Here, psh, potatoes. Nobody there. Anyone? I don't want to stay here for long in this room. It's cold, you know, but I was hoping for the female genie. They come to me and do something. Make me feel hot. Female genie. Hey, Muslims, is that why the prophet he used to imagine himself having sex? In fact, he did not. Maybe he was having sex with a genie. Correct, guys? The wife of Muhammad, she said, and she is a first-hand witness, that her beautiful, pretty husband, Fakira, he used to imagine himself doing boom, boom to his wives. But in fact, he did not. So who was it then? A genie? Aisha, she said, the Prophet continued for such and such. Hey, Muslims, what do you mean such and such? Is that the year? Which one is the year? Which one is the month? Which one is the day? I mean, why you don't say, why you take it off for such and such? Is that because it's an embarrassment? Uh... You know the Arab, they used to measure like they have a they have a weird things in history, like you know how they measure history. And I will give you an example. In the in the Middle East, the biggest shame, biggest shame if you fart, fart, fart. You know, like not in USA. In USA, if you you know like uh, if you barb like you know this is a shame, but if you fart, it's okay in USA. So there's a guy. He's a Bedouin guy, an Arab Bedouin. One day he was sitting with his friend and he farted. His name is Hamad. His name is what? Hamad. Like from the name of Muhammad, which means Muhammad. So Hamad, because now he farted, nobody can forget that he farted. Wherever he go, people say, uh, Hamad fart. Hamad did, etc. So, and not only that, uh, you know, like even they measure things. Like when, when you are going to... Uh, when when the last time you you saw your you know etc person it says uh, Hamad, when Hamad did fart, so Hamad he decided to leave his homeland, and he decided to go far away, and he stayed away for forty years, forty years. He came back, and he found an old woman. Next to the well of the water, he noticed her. He remember her. He was young, you know. And she was still not that old, but he was able to recognize her. He, he said, hey, auntie, how are you? How are you doing? How is your son? Uh, how old is he now? She said, he is right now 40 years because he was he is now 44 years old because he was born four years after Hamad farted. <laughs> so the fart of Hamad became a, a point of history. The woman now she is measuring when her son is born, 44 years he is now, because he was born four years after Hamad fart. You know, Hamad he said to himself, What the heck? 
I stayed away for 40 years and I still didn't remember. I better go. She said, who are you? He said, nobody. Take care. <laughs> and now we have a prophet who used to be imagining his wife having sex with him or his wives. And what is the date? Fart and fart. Since Hamad farted. What is the date? What does that mean? What do you mean such and such? Why you take it off? Is that the Hamad the 14th day? Is that the Chinese year? And then by the way, in case you don't know how 14 is something big in the in the in the Islamic uh, religion, you can go check out. You will see just type in this website just type here. Let me teach you a trick. Just type here in English. I'm not going to type for you in Arabic. Just type fort. Fort. Ah, fort. Ah, bingo. The smell is all over the place. If you fart, Allah don't accept your prayer. Why? Like, what the heck? Allah don't accept the prayer of somebody he did fart. Why God will not accept your prayer if you fart? What the heck is that? Is there is your prayer is delivered with the fart? Is your prayer will go all the way to Allah with the fart? I mean you don't mean it. Especially you are bending over and you push your, when you bend over, you are going to push your stomach, you press it, you know. So if you have gas, we'll go. What, what the heck? If you do it on purpose, I can say, okay. And not to forget the hadith where it says that the shaitan, he strayed the hair of the Muslim anus and he will not stop when they are praying until he make them fart and he hear it and he smell it. Look at the... Man, this guy, Shaitan, is so stubborn. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Until now, we have zero Muslim. Anyone? <clears throat> Al Khomeini, the big sheikh of the Shia who died. He was making fun of the Sunni. He said to them, you have the biggest library of a bathroom. Why? Because they have thousands of books about farting. Actually, there's a person, he made a PhD degree, a PhD degree, imagine, in Saudi Arabia. He's a doctor now. What his PhD is in Islam? The sounds come from the stomach. Let me, let me, let me find it. This is an Islamic school. He is studying, you know, this is Sharia. You know, you have to know what kind of sound it is. How many sounds? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the title of his PhD. Uh, uh, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I need to get exactly the name of the person and the name of the, the study. This is not about like science. This is about is Islamic religion. This is not like a study, uh, you know, like a disease or no, no. This is about just a prayer, how to pray, what kind of sound will make yourself, 
uh, your prayer is not valid and you know uh, let us see Yeah, I cannot remember the name. But because I saw this many, many years ago. <clears throat> if you fart in the bathtub during ab ab absolution, you just blow up or, or something. Uh, you know, supposedly this is about being clean. It's okay, I mean, no problem. But you know, this guy, the one who speak about farting will de if, if they like defay your your uh, your prayer how he can be the same person who used to take a shower with dead dogs he do abolition with dead dogs and warm blood from period i mean when you hear the person speaking about if you fart your prayer is not accepted i would say okay maybe he is you know being so extra clean they respect their god they respect their religion but look how muhammad he prepared himself for a prayer the man literally he sunk himself in water have dead dogs and women have blood from period and garbage. And look, this is the Muslim translation. Abu Sa'id al-Khudari said, Some people ask Allah Messenger whether he might perform ablution out of the will of Bid'ah, which is a will into which menstrual clothing, dead dogs and stinking things were thrown in. He replied, water is always pure. But we have dead dogs in it, and he himself, he take a shower there. I, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, you perform wudu, wudu which means ablution, from the will which the bodies of dogs, they are not even complete dogs, they are like pieces. You know, you can imagine how filthy the water is, and minstrel rags, and garbage thrown in. He said, water is pure, and nothing make it impure. Do you see it? So when you see Muhammad speaking about farting will cancel the acceptance of your prayer, you might think that this guy is extra clean. But this guy is totally out of his mind. I mean, why even you are using that water? Even you see the reason the people asking him, are you doing that? Because nobody would do that. He's doing a stupid thing. He's a crazy man. Yeah, it's it's metaphoric. Yeah, metaphoric. Yeah, those dogs, by the way, they are metaphoric dead dogs. And uh, yeah, I, I get the point. You, you are right. It's a metaphoric. <laughs> I like the metaphoric thing. Listen, brother, this is metaphoric. Okay. See here it says, dead dogs. It doesn't say dead dog. Mm. Dead dogs. Think about it. Close your eyes. Dead dogs. It's not a dead dog. So it's not confirmed that they are really dogs. It's dead dogs. Dogs. Sometimes you call somebody, your neighbor, you call him, he's a dog. You sometimes you get angry from your husband, you say he's a dog because he bite you. Sometimes you call your wife a dog because she bite you. You never know. So this is metaphorical. This is have nothing to do with real dogs. And now we go to the second part. Ministral, ministral. How many times we hear the Christians say ministry? Huh? Ministry. God bless your ministry. Huh? So ministral in Islam is very close to the uh, like ministry thing. It's a ministerial ministry. And why it's called ministral? Because the one is involved in it, they are women. All right? So this is metaphorical for women so like are you going to take water which brought for you by women and look it says it closes why because at that time women they used to collect water in their pocket because pocket at that time they was to wake to to be made from nylon and plastic you know the profit was not like going green too much and then you might say here it says experiment experiment well experiment sorry you are stupid Experiment, it says here, it's mean X, X. It's not experiment no more. It's X. That's mean it's recycled already. It was poo-poo, but now it's not. It's fertilizer now. 
And now we get you busted. We refuted all the stuff you said. Hmm? It's not excrement. It is X. X. Do you see the word X? Don't you Christian prince says to you, ex-Muslim? There's a huge difference between ex-Muslim and Muslim. Here, it's in the front of you. It says X remnant. X. So it's not anymore. Okay? And now I got you busted. How you can solve the problem. This is why you cannot win a debate with a Christian prince. We'll find a solution for it. <coughs> how come most of the Arab, they still follow Muhammad? We are the most Arab follow Muhammad. Go just to the and see how, how many people follow Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the appearance, they follow Muhammad, but in reality, nobody. Oh, boy. Um. And the funny, this is their translation. You know, if we translate, they will say you are a liar. But this is their website. This is not us. Let us see if this is Fakira. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Any Muslim would like to call us? Nobody? All right. Well, we are trying uh, to call a Muslim. He called himself Jiha, but he did not answer. He said, is not online. Jiha is not online. He said to me, Salam, liar. Liar. I mean, we showed it to them in the screen, and yet they call us liar. This is their website. This is their translation. This is their, uh, uh, this is the number. This is the reference. And yet they call me what? Liar. Yeah, it's a metaphorical. Drink this water. If somebody comes to your house and they ask you what's your name, tell them drink this water. If they start drinking from your kitchen, tell them this is metaphorical. You either don't drink my juice. You want to call me? Are you a Muslim? We are taking calls only from Muslims. Only Muslims. Any true believer, he think he can call us and tell us what's wrong with this religion? If there's nothing wrong, show us. Anyone? Yeah, this is sunnah.com. Yeah, this is sunnah.com. This is a very well-known Muslim website. Actually, I think this website is run uh, by the Dean Show, which is sponsored by Qatar, I think. Sunnah.com. So this is Islamic TV, and they are the one. And you can contact them, you know. See, sunnah.com. This is not my website. <coughs> Do we have any strong believer would like to call us? If you are here first time, don't forget to subscribe. And if you are second time, don't forget to unsubscribe. For if you do so, Allah will double your reward. For you just unsubscribe from a Christian prince. Do that all day long. Subscribe and subscribe. By the end of the day, you will have thousands of rewards. Let us fool Allah. Click the bomb. <laughs> I mean, even the logic of reward. Look, uh, uh, they ask uh, Sheikh Asim. Hold on, let me go there.
Oh boy, I'm I'm typing. I'm you. I'm uh, and I'm uh, typing in Arabic. I want to use English. <coughs> Brother, brother, this is the video for Zach and Mike. Why? Look at the title. Why killing lizard is encouraged in Islam, brother? Have you heard of any religion? And look, look, look at the discussion. Look, the Muslim serious discussion. Look at this. And this guy is looking down to see if there is a lizard around so he can get reward. Hadith about killing lizard. Adnan Rashid Hamza Tartuzi. Why is killing lizard is good deed in Islam? Brother, who would like to call us and tell us why killing a lizard is a good deed in Islam? <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you know why I have guns? Did you ask yourself? You might think for self-defense or no, I want to kill lizards because this is how I can make a lot of deeds when I see Allah. Hey, people of Indonesia, if I come to Indonesia, do you have a lot of lizard there? Indonesian people, do you have a lot of lizard there? If you have a lot of lizard, I'm going to buy a ticket and come to you immediately. I spend the whole day just going around. I'm very good with the arrow too, you know? Like those, especially the new ones. Man, very good with it. So I go around like in the bushes between the banana, you know, go to the banana. I love banana, you know? I hope there's no atheist in the bushes. He will say, here we go. We just approve the theory that they are, all of us, we use originally to be monkeys. Otherwise, why this guy, he like banana? The atheists, they have their own logic too, by the way. So... Why is killing lizard is a good deed in Islam? Who was a Muslim want to tell me? Why the prophet he taught you that killing lizard is a good deed in Islam? Anyone? You know, I'm going to the Indonesian embassy. I will apply for residency, and they will ask me for what the job, what do you, why, what do you want to do there? I will say I'm going to lead an army of Muslims to kill the lizard to do jihad. The Abdul in the embassy, he will give me at least ten years visa. Hmm. Yeah. Anyone, any Muslim can tell us what the story? Huh? Uh, Lil John, he says, isn't it uh, Isaiah was exposed by a lizard when he was hiding in the tree? <laughs> so? <laughs> if this is true, so what? This guy, the same guy who asked, brother, do you know who is the one who killed Jesus? Lil John. Do you know who is the one who killed Jesus? Is it Shaitan? Is it Allah, God will? Or it is the Jews? The stupid little John, he forgot that his God in the Quran says that the one who killed Jesus is the Jews. That's what the Jews say. We killed Jesus, Isa. Let us say I was hiding behind a tree and a dog bark. Why I'm going to kill the dogs? And I teach my people to kill all the dogs. Hmm? In fact, the story is more hilarious. According to Muhammad, when the non-believers were trying to burn Abraham, all animals, they were trying to put down the fire. Except the lizard. Is that a true, Lil John? Or I'm making things up? Is that true? 
Is that really the reason? Hmm? You can watch any of those videos and they will tell you the story. All the animals, they try to put the fire down, except Mr. Lizard. True story, brother. This is a true and real story. <laughs> brother the house lizard have to be killed brother like why please why why any muslim can tell us why what he what what the lizard did should we go after his family all of them or only him An insect that is according to the sheikhs of Islam, the house lizard is an insect. Insect, an insect, the, the house lizard is an insect, an insect that is harmful. <laughs> Some of it cause brother, 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 brother. It's an insect and it's harmful. But is that the reason to kill it? No. No. This is the real reason. Mice do heinous things. Though people nowadays are so fond of them. We're told to kill the cross, a craw that... Anyway, you can watch the video and die laughing. So the story is that a lizard, he tried to kill Abraham and he tried to burn him. Who is a Muslim he believe in such a story? That all animals, they try to put the fire down. All animals except Mr. Lizard. Huh? Listen carefully for the real reason. Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was thrown by his people in the blazing fire. All the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire with the exception of the house lizard. It used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. And... Hmm. Uh, well, Lil John, you are just being stupid. This is what Islam teaches, and we just showed you what it says. So stop lying. Get out of here. What would happen to Isaiah? You Muslim even don't know the name of Isaiah. We ask the Muslims, who is Isaiah? Who is Isaiah? They will say to you, it says in the Quran, it's Haq. We ask them, what does Haq mean? They say it's Haq. You know, what Abraham mean? They don't know. And here we go, this is your Sheikh and this is your Prophet saying that. So don't say because of Isaiah. You see, we don't accept liars here. I mean, aren't you ashamed even to lie about what the real reason? And where we can find the story of Isaiah in your book? And let us say, assume that I was hiding behind a tree and there is a, a bird. People were 
following me to kill me. And then a bird fly, and then people notice that somebody is moving there, so they come to me and they catch me. Am I going to order the people to kill all the birds because of that bird? I mean, who is the stupid here? So all the animals of Allah, all the creatures, read with me the subtitle. All the creatures of Allah, they were trying to put the fire down, except the lizard. What the lizard was doing? He was blowing in the fire. All the creatures of Allah were trying to put the fire off, to put the fire down, except the Mr. Lizard. And where we find this? We find this in the Sahih Hadith. Even he himself, he quote for you the Hadith. And he said, this is Sahih. Do you see it? There's a Sahih Hadith, authentic, in Al-Bukhari. So all of this is coming from Al-Bukhari. And then this guy, he says, no, this is from Isaiah. Do we have any brave Muslim here would like to call us? Anyone? Any brave Abdul? Any brave Abdul? Half a brave Abdul, we take no problem. Anyone? Hey Christians, who is the one who killed Jesus? It is a God? Well, it is the Jews or it is Satan? <laughs> what a diarrhea. Jesus said, I lay down myself and nobody can take me. Which mean, they want to kill him, yes. He knew they are going to do it, yes. But if Jesus don't want it to happen, it will never happen. He lay down himself, but he did not kill himself. There's a huge difference. The story of the crucifixion is about Jesus showing the Christians and his followers that everything he said is absolutely true. All the prophecies about him is absolutely true. This is why in the cross he says it's perfect it's complete and even in the cross he says forgive them father they don't know what they are doing so they are the one who did that he did not do it to himself but still he said i lay down myself all the mission of jesus is to come and save the whole mankind the one who accept him they are called the christians the one who reject them, they call pagan like Muhammad. So when somebody tried to make a, like a, a statement saying, who killed Jesus? Is it maybe God will? Is it God will? We don't believe in the predestiny, but we believe in God will. So the will of God, for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. And that's why Jesus, when he spoke to the Father, he said, let your will be done. But God did not force the Jews to kill Jesus, and he did not ask them to kill Jesus, and he did not cause them to, cause, to kill Jesus. 
It was their hatred against him. In the same time, if Jesus did not die on the cross, how we will know for sure that he can do what he claimed? He said, you can destroy this temple and I can rebuild it in three days. When Jesus was crucified, even the disciples, they thought it's over. The Lord is gone. But Jesus came back again. And that's why one of his disciples, he says, I will not believe unless I see. I want to see, I want to see by my own eyes. I cannot believe this. So Jesus, he proved who he is, even by death. Not only when he was alive between us, even after resurrection, even during death, even when he died, a miracle happened. People of lizard, they are talking about logic. I like it. And then we see, like once I remember a Muslim, I, I was sitting with two Muslims, uh, and one of them, you know, they get excited when they see someone is an Arab and a Christian. So he wanted supposedly to question how I believe in this. So he said to me, uh, well, if Jesus is son of God, don't you think his father will save him? I said, well, this is a very good logic. You are right. If Jesus is son of God, his father should save him. But guess what? That's mean Jesus is son of God in Islam. Because according to Islam, his father saved him. <laughs> the other guy who is older, he said to him, See, I told you, don't go there. I spoke to him before, you are no match. Answer now, go ahead, answer. And then the Abdul starts saying, no, no, I don't mean, I mean you, you and your belief. I said, you know, no, you see, either you use your logic or you, have, you are being hypocrite. This is your logic. If Jesus is son of God, then his father should save him. But isn't it, this is what happened according to Islam? They are hypocrite. They will never use the logic they use against you for their own, they have double standard. If this is the reason why Jesus cannot be God, because his father should save him, well, this is exactly what happened in Islam then. And not only that, the stupid Quran confirm that the Jews, they say, we killed the Messiah. The Quran never say that the Messiah, he killed himself or I killed him or no he says the opposite he says the Jews they say we crucified him even the mission how they did it and the Quran confirm that this is really what happened how even though it says no they did not do it but he said but it was made appeared into them which means this is what happened if you go to the court and the judge asks you what he will ask you you are there for a reason. You, you, they call you witness. What is the witness? Who is the witness? The witness is somebody who witnessed something. An eyesighting. So the Jews, they eyesight Jesus in the cross. And they are the one, according to the Quran, who put nails in his hands. And they are the one who they killed him. So not only they saw it, they did it by their own hands. And the Quran confirmed that this is what they saw. Now, the Quran have a statement which I find it very useful. It says, if you are truthful, bring your proof. You see, I am using your logic. If you are truthful, bring your proof. As an example, chapter 2, verse 111. 
And this verse is even about the Christian and the Jews. The Christian and the Jews, they say, nobody go to heaven except us. Say, produce your proof if you are truthful. Let us use the same logic Allah is using in the Quran, Akka Muhammad. Can you Muslim produce your proof that what happened that Allah, he made Jesus look in the cross, killed in the cross? In fact, if you can make that proof, that means Jesus was in the cross and the Christians they are and the Jews they are telling the truth because this is what they saw. So the verses in the Bible speaking about Jesus dying in the cross are truthful verses. For the Quran confirm that what the disciples they say it is what they saw. People, do you understand what I'm saying? The Quran confirm that the Bible is telling the truth about the crucifixion of Jesus. Why? Because this is what they saw. So the Quran confirmed that there was a crucifixion. The Quran confirmed that there is someone. They call him Jesus. Not only Jesus, they call him the son of Mary. You see the Muslim, they will come to you and say, Oh, there is someone next to him in the cross. His name is Jesus too. You stupid idiot. The Quran says that they say Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. Do you see how we use the Quran to get them busted with their lies? They say, no, no, there is someone, you know, his name is Jesus too in the cross. Look at the Quran. They are talking about a specific person. The Jews, every Jew, he have a father. They will call him by his father name. Jesus is the only one. He have only a mother. Jesus, the son of Mary. Not only that, Allah messenger. So this is why the Muslim, they don't dare to debate us because we use their own stupid books against their own mouth. This verse confirm actually that we Christian, we believe in what happened and this is what happened. Even though we do not need the stupid Muhammad to confirm to us because this guy, he came 600 years after Jesus. The funny is that a Muslim like Zakir Naik, he will say to you, Brother and sister, the book of Dawn is written 60 years after Jesus. 60 years after Jesus. Okay, hold on. Let us say, assume it's true, 60 years after Jesus. So how you reject a book written 60 years after Jesus, but you accept a book written 600 years, actually, it's not even 600 years, the book, the Quran, the Muslim, they have, they don't have it. Nobody have it. But if we assume that Muhammad, he came with this statement, 600 years after Jesus, so how you refuse 60 and you accept 600? How you refuse somebody, he was a witness, he was a disciple of Jesus, and you accept somebody, he never been in the land of Jesus. He never been with Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He don't even know how to say his name. He called him Isa. Who is Isa? Do you see why and how easy to get you busted? Do we have any brave Muslim here? You see, there's two things I don't like. Don't lie. Especially if things is so clear, I will, you know, I, I will lose my patient. I will block you. I mean, you can lie a little bit, like you know, at the time, like you know, like a rat eating little cheese from time to time. I will let it go, but when your lie is so big, I will smash you. And here we need to ask ourselves a question: Why Jesus is in heaven and Muhammad is in the grave? But Allah took him into himself. Okay, why Allah did not take Muhammad? And not only that, the stupidity even continue in the verse 159. It says, not one of the people of the scriptures, but will believe in him before his death. 
What the heck? You stupid idiot. How you are calling them people of the scriptures, which means they are following the scriptures, which means they are following Jesus. And they will believe in him before his death. So why they are called people of the scriptures? Christians, do we Christians consider Jehovah's Witnesses people of the scriptures? Do we call them people of scriptures? We don't, right? They have a fabricated translation for the Bible. The Mormon is the same. They don't believe Jesus is, you know, they believe in him as God. There's many gods. They believe that he is even an angel. His name is Michael. When you call us people of the scriptures, that mean we are following the scriptures. So how we will believe later when already we are called people of the scriptures you don't earn such a title if you are not a believer the quran never said that the muslims are people of the scriptures can you believe it the quran never ever said once not even once that the Muslims are people of the scriptures, only us. The Quran called the Muslims Ummiyin, the Gomai, the pagan. The Quran confirmed that the Gomai is those who don't have scriptures. Christians are not Gomai, Jews are not. Chapter 2, verse number 78. Muhammad, he sat now between the Jews, and now he learned from the Jews. Otherwise, this guy, he have nothing to do with Judaism and Christianity. He is just a fraud. And then we will find tons of verses that even the Christians, they call the Muslims Ummiyin, the illiterate, the ignorant, the Gomai. Do you see it? The pagan. Look, look at the translation. Chapter 3, verse number 75. The people of the book, some of them, they are very good. And you can trust them. And some of them, you cannot. And those some, they say, what we have to do with those ignorant, between two bracket, pagans? What the Christians in the time of Muhammad, they call the Muslims? Pagans. Do you see it? This is the Quran. Chapter 3, verse number 75. What is the word is used here? Is ummiyin, which means they are illiterate. They don't know God. They are pagans. They don't have a book of God. They are follow pagans God. This is what they've been given as a title, and this is what the Quran calling them. And the funny is that Allah in the Quran confirmed that the Muslims are Ummiyin, they are pagans. Chapter 3, verse number 20. Look what the verse is saying. So if they dispute with thee, say, I have submitted, not submitted, surrender. My whole self to Allah and those who follow me and say to the people of the book and those who they are unlearned see the first translation here the other one it says pagans the unlearned is the Muslims say to the unlearned did you surrender to Allah they are learned. Why, why he's calling them unlearned? They are illiterate about the true God. The Christians are people who they are learned. They are not the pagan, and the Quran confirmed that. So this is why the Muslim they fear somebody he knew all the laundry of Muhammad.
They prefer somebody who will def to defend the Christianity by, by just using the Bible. I don't waste my time because whatever I say to you about the Bible, you're not even listening. I get you busted from your book. In chapter 7, verse number 158, the Quran confirmed again that Muhammad is a pagan. What is the word is used? The illiterate prophet. How he is a prophet and he is illiterate. Any Muslim can answer? Maybe we should make a video about it. How you can be prophet because illiterate is about not knowing God. This is not about not knowing how to write, how to read. How he is a messenger of God and he is illiterate about God. How we knew that this is about literacy about God? The Quran says so. We just showed you the verses. Chapter 2, verse number 78, says those who they are illiterate, is who is the one who know not the scriptures do you see it this is not about reading or writing so how a person who do not know the scriptures he can teach the scriptures a prophet who do not know god he is a prophet a prophet who do not know the scriptures he is a prophet You see, when the Muhammadan they say, uh, that the word unlearned or illiterate mean he cannot write and read because those people, they are stupid. The Quran in front of you, it says clearly what it's meant. The illiterate is the one who do not know the book. This is why we are called people of the book and anyone else is called the illiterate. The Quran divide the people to two people. People of the scriptures and people who they are illiterate. And learned. It's in the front of you. Do we have any Muslim here who would like to say anything? Somebody saying, uh, not being picky, but isn't it spelled differently and literate and illiterate? It doesn't matter for me. I'm not even, I don't care about the translation. I speak Arabic. This is the English for you. I don't agree with any Muslim translation. If you change the translator, you will find different translation, different words. Does it make any difference, really? For me, I read it in Arabic as it is. For you, you are stuck with the with the with the with the language you speak. Don't repeat the same request many times. I'm not, I'm not a blind, my friend. Video about Tete and ISIS. I mean, that all everybody knows the video. So what a big deal. What's wrong with people? The T and ISIS. Now the T is the one is good. You people make me want to vomit. So translation will not make any different, at least for me. But you can change the translation. Here we go. The same word switch to illiterate. Are you happy now? Do you see it? This is the same website. This is Muslim translation. Now it is illiterate. I was, I was saying it. And there are among them illiterate who know not the book.
So who is the one who is illiterate? Is the one who do not know the book, not the one who do not know how to write, how to read. Remember, this is a book supposedly about faith. And this is a proof that the Muslims are very ignorant. They don't even understand their book. Actually, I believe all of this in the front of us never was in Arabic. All of this was in Aramaic. This is why I believe that what we see in the front of us is a translation of the Quran. Which means it is an adjustment from the Aramaic into what is called Arabic. Arabic is a very mixed language. This is why the Quran, like the Quran keeps saying this is an Arabic book, Arabic book, Arabic book. But then you ask them, okay, what the word Ummiyun mean? They don't know. That's why they are saying Ummiyun means that somebody don't know how to read, how to write. But as you see, the verse is so clear. It says those who do not know the book, not the one who do not know how to write, how to read. So their explanation for their own book is against their own verses. For if it's meant to be about illiteracy, about not able to write and read, then this verse is wrong. Do we have any Muhammadan want to say anything? And then the funny, it says, then are we to those who write the book with their hands? Who wrote the Quran? How many Quran they have? And where is the Quran of Muhammad? They have none of it. In reality, the Quran says it clearly that Allah, he forbid the Muslims and forbid Muhammad from writing the Quran. And I find it very funny that the God of Islam saying it is on us and the God of Islam always he called himself us. You ask the Muslim why if he is one, they say because he feel like majestic, which is very stupid. That's mean Allah is not satisfied with him being one. So he like to call himself us because he feel more confident with being many instead of one. It is for us to collect it and to gather it. Gather what? The Quran. So who is the one should be collecting the Quran? Allah. Not the Muslims. Somebody saying this is royal us. Well, how it can be royal us, my friend? When you say royal us, the king, he is speaking in the name of the nobles, because there are many. The king is one of the nobles. And usually he is chosen by the noble to be their king. So how that can be royal? Is Allah speaking in the name of the nobles and he was elected, selected? That is even more funny. And if Allah, he liked to call himself us to be noble, that's mean Allah as one is not noble. And if God, he need to call himself us. You see, if the God of the Christians say us, well, the Christian believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Muslim, they say Allah is one. Okay. It, when a Muslim, he says, when Allah, he call himself us, that is like a royal, majestic. But that's mean Allah, he cannot find himself to be majestic if he is one. So he have a, to use a, a fake language because is he us really for real? Or this is a false word. Who is a Muslim when I answer us? Is Allah is us for real or he's only one person? Any Muslim can answer? 
if he is only one person, and this is what the most they will say, and then he use us, that means Allah, he don't feel good to be one. And not only that, as long as we mention this, there's other verse in the Quran where Allah, he is going to have sex with us. With who? With us. In chapter 21, verse number 17, Allah, he says, if we would like to take a partner, Muslim translation between two bracket, i.e., wife or a son, etc. I like it, etc. We could surely have taken it from us. Is it now majestic too? He's talking about taking a partner. And if Allah is one, who is us who he will take partner from? If you say the wife is a human, that will be even more funny because how a human can become or become an us? In order to be us, you have to be from the same kind. If you are standing between a bunch of donkeys and somebody says to, say to you, uh, who is with you? You say us, that's funny. You mean who? Where is There's no human beside you. There's donkeys. You use us for people of your kind. So when Allah, he says, he is going to take a partner. He will take it from what? From us. How that work? Is that majestic? Do we have any Muhammadan? Allah is going maybe to marry Allah. Do we have any Muhammadan want to say anything? So wherever we go, this religion is stupid. Nothing makes sense. Who is us? Who is the partner? And you know, if you say, if Allah want to take a partner, he will take it from us. That means the us is already exist. Because the Muslim, they will say to you, well, have we intended? If we are going to, okay, if, still it's mean they are there. Correct? If I say, if I want to eat, I will eat from my garden. That's mean I have a garden. Now we are talking about taking a partner. And this partner is a female, so we can have a baby son. And what make it more funny and more stupid, this God, he cannot have a son unless he got a wife. You see, the word in Arabic is lahu. Lahu is a woman. It's not, as they say here, like past time. This is false translation. Lahu is a word mean a woman. A female, literally. So if we want to take a female, we are going to take from ourselves. And here you will notice how the Quran is a stupid. He says Lahwan, which is a female, and then Latakhnahu, speaking about it as a male. Because the Quran grammar is horrible. Do we have any Abdul have any objection? Anyone? And by, by the way, uh, uh, maybe Christian Prince is saying this, but it's not true. You can open the interpretation. 
This is why the Muslim between two brackets, they say to him, to your wife, a son, etc. Did you ask yourself why the Muslim saying the word wife? Maybe it's a TV. Why the Muslim they choose the word wife? Why the word women or wife is there? And then when you go and read the interpretation, they will say to you, he is talking about taking a wife from the whore. But isn't it the whore or the women who the Muslim will sleep with them? How they are human and they are women and those are made for men like me and you to sleep with them and then Allah will take one of them to be his partner, his wife. That means Allah is a man. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. If Allah, he would like to take a partner, read with me carefully. He would found it with ourselves from among the beautiful eyed huris or the angels. But the Quran confirmed that the angels are male. They are not female. Isn't it the Quran say that they made the angels females? Speaking about non-Muslim doing that, the Arab. Huh? And even they worship them. They worship the daughters of Allah. And these verses make it so clear that angels are not females. Chapter 37, verse number 150. So how Allah will take an angel as a wife? Do you see it? Chapter 37, verse 150 says, or that we created the angels female, did we? Did we really create any angels as females? He's saying, no, we did not. So how Allah is going to take a partner as a wife from the angels? And the funny here, Look at the Muslims, if there is any one of them there to answer. Okay, as long the angels are not female, so what is their gender? Hey Muslim, do they have gender? They have no answer. Female mean lahu. Uh, yeah, fa lahu mean female. Well, you know, for us as a human, when we say female, we are talking about a human, right? According to the Muslim interpretation, the word lahu is a female in the language of human. Or let's say the dialect of human. Any Muhammadan? And, and the funny too, that if we ask the Muslim, okay, what is the gender of Allah? If they say 
they will say to you, he is not a female. He is not a female. Okay, is he a male? You just said he. And as you see, he is speaking about himself taking a partner which is a female. In different verse, the Quran says, how Allah can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend? So what is his gender? Obviously, he's a male. Okay, if Allah is a male, you see, Jesus come to this earth in the flesh of a man as a male. Wonderful. But Jesus as God don't get married. This is explain why. If he is just a prophet like everybody, well, he got married, he would have kids. But he don't have a woman. He never had one. Yet he have a full look and a flesh of a human being as a male. Allah have a male member part. For what reason? In the Quran, in chapter 6, verse 101 says, To him is due the primal of origin of the heaven and the earth. How can he have a son if he don't have a girlfriend? This verse confirms, chapter 6, verse 101, that the God of Islam is a male God. Why? In order to have a son, he did not say, how I can have a son without having a husband. If Allah is a female, he will say, she will say, how can I have a son and I don't have a husband or a boyfriend? What he said is the other, the opposite. He said, how can he, and again, look, Allah is saying he, how can he have a son when he has no girlfriend? Do you see why we say Islam is a very silly, stupid religion? Dictionary online says for amusement. Well, I can get that busted in two seconds. Let a Muslim call me and I will get him busted in two seconds. What say you? Any Muslim who want to call me and get me busted? Let us see if the word Dahu mean. And actually, if, if this is true, why the Muslim they put the word female? Wife, you know? If, there's, if, the, if this is not about wives, why, why the word wife is there? How they come to the conclusion of a female? Why wife? And how he will have, uh, why, uh, 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 why he want to have a wife? So he can have son. This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. All right, this is what? This is Tafsir al-Qurtubi. Let us show you the, the link so you can see from the title. Hmm. Quran key SA. Uh, dot education Saudi Arabia. This is official government website, and this is Tafsir al Qurtubi. And what is the word Lahu? Read. Qawlahu Taala. Law aradna an nattakhida lahuan. Qalu imraa. It is a woman. It is. A woman. This is Al Qurtubi, and we can go and show you many places. Let us show you more actually. Let me give you this thing first. You can go and use Google Translation to translate the page.
We don't say things without proof. From their books. Can they deny it? We challenged him. Actually, in the same page, hold on. In the same page, I missed that part. Give me a second. Here we go. Let's put it in the screen again. In the first two line, in the first first line, it says when Allah He says, "Anna taqida lahuan wa lahu al mar'a bi lughat al Yemen," and lahu is a woman in the language of Yemen or the dialect of Yemen. Let's use Google translation. Uh, let's see. Sexual intercourse. Where is the where is the line is gone? Uh, he said. What is even the word Yemen? I don't see it. Kutada says in the Jesuits it was Atam Mujahid. Okay, uh, and like in the, in the English translation, is it's gone. However, you can do this. You can copy this part. Let us do this. We will copy this part. This line, and we will go to Google Translation. You can do the same, even if you don't speak English. I mean, don't speak Arabic, sorry. But anyway, any Muslim who speak Arabic, he knew what I'm saying. We open Google Translation, we copy exactly as it is here. And now we go to Google Translation in front of your eyes. I will copy and paste the sentence as it is. Take fun women, fun, is in the language of Yemen. <laughs> Translation is horrible. But this way it says, Yemen. He is saying, we will take Lahu, and Lahu is meant the women in the dialect of Yemen. You see it? So this is the first line in the book of Al-Qurtubi. This is not me saying that, this is them. This is the Muhammad and Demsaf saying that. We have somebody trying to call us. Let's see. I hope he's a Muslim. Hello? Long time. <laughs> Yes. <gasps> okay, so um, basically, I'm Moroccan, right. and um, yes, and um, I've been watching your videos for like a month or so now. All right. Um, you're so convincing, to be honest. Um, I, <laughs> I tried. Um, like, I'm so convinced, to be honest, now, and um. <sighs> The problem is that I try to talk to my father about it, like to ask him more questions, because I don't have more like much people to ask, and okay. uh, I don't trust. I don't trust uh, those, um, you know, imams and stuff because they already don't respect women, like they don't even want to talk to you. Yeah, you so, are. You are like. A, you you are like. A... A different creature you are a down creature you know you are not even worth talking to yeah like they don't even like try to look at you like and you feel like they're talking fast like they're just trying to get you off like just i mean like go away go away you know it's not a good feeling so um i tried to talk to my dad but the first question i asked him is about the jews 
I was like, okay, and now about Arab, I'm sorry, about Arabs, I was like, okay, so uh, Arab came from uh, the Jews, all right? Then how they became Arab? And he started telling me the story that doesn't make any sense. And I was like, okay. And then I asked him about um, other things that you said in your channel and all his answers were like, so weird. And I told him about the story, like why the Christian, uh, like why Jesus story is different in Islam, because you know, Jesus in Islam, he was born in Sahara under a, a palm tree, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, why is it different? And he was like, and he was like, um, well, it's corrupt from there, not from us. Like us, God already told us the original story. So they are wrong. And I was like, wow. I mean, so it's all true. Have you ever, have you ever, uh, like you, you said you are from Morocco. Have you ever like yes. uh, in touch with the palm tree before? We have palm trees. You have a palm tree in the <laughs> yard. Okay. I want you to do this today. After you finish but talking they're, to they're me. Big, they're big. I'm not in Morocco now. Um, I ran from there. I'm, I'm oh, okay. I understand. I understand. But I mean, anyway, like if you get the chance one day to see a palm tree, I want you to do yeah. something very the, the Quran speak of. Uh, okay. The Quran says when 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 Mary, uh, she uh, wanted to give birth, uh, and she want to eat. She is hungry. She was able to shake the palm tree. Exactly, exactly. Like the palm tree is so fucking like thick. Well, no, don't you, like it's no, so no, big no, to the no, point. No, no bad language, please. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, like it's so like big and huge to the point that you can't even like roll your hand around it. Like how no, can you I, shake I, it? I, 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 I wanna I wanna show you how Mary she used to be I was able to do that. She used to go to the gym every day. Yeah, maybe <laughs> she go she go to the gym every day and she practice and she got muscles and this is very makes sense you know and now she is going to deliver a child and she is hungry I'm so glad that she should not even take the tree from the ground the whole tree I mean who in the world can believe such a story that a female woman she is carrying a baby and now she is going to deliver hardly she can move not only she is a female uh, who is the male he can shake a tree what a tree, a palm tree. And if you shake it from the bomb, you can make that the, the date fill from the top. And how you can shake the bomb of a palm tree? So not only the story is different from our stories, it's totally stupid story. I know, I know, like exactly. And look, like, because even men, like when they climb palm tree to get the dates, like they climb it. They don't take it. Even if you climb so, it, still you have to use a sharp tool so you can cut the, the, yeah. the thing. They are very hard to fail. They don't fail that easy. I mean, they will fail only if, if they are like done. They are rotten, you know? So uh, uh, you cannot just make, uh, shake the tree, especially in the bottom of the tree. Like, you know, if I say maybe Mary, she was like uh, 20 meters tall and she got the, the, the little, little tiny branch where they have some date and she shake it. Eh, but we know that the palm tree, uh, you know, they, they come like a, uh, uh, like a big uh, branch full of yeah, date. And there is no way a person can shake the ground of the tree. We are talking about tree in the palm, you know. If, uh, if the tree, maybe it was a grape, I would say, okay, grape, maybe, you know. It's possible. You can shake it. Uh, but this is a palm tree. Yeah, she was uh, Samson, but, you know. Yeah, so so what what do you think? Uh, I don't know what to call you. What uh, you, you don't need to say your um, you don't have to say your name. You can give me any name you wish. Um, I don't know, like R Ray, anything. It's okay. Like I don't. Really... Okay, I will call you Fatima. Here we go. I gave you a name. No, bro. Not no. Fatima. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's okay. You don't have to copy anything. All right. Just girl so what? So what do you think? As long as you are convinced, I, I feel like you are. I mean, you already you noticed that Islam is a really stupid religion. What did you ask your father about? Uh, like, uh, why in the heaven? As long as you are a lady, why in the heaven the Muslim man will have a lot of women for sex, and the women she will get nothing. She will be just a toy. What is the reward for you the see, women? 
you see, I didn't even get to ask this question. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm lucky that my family is not that crazy, you know, like, because you know Arab people, like, they're so crazy that you can't even have a conversation with your father. Yeah. But I'm lucky that my father, at least, he's listening. He doesn't really say bad stuff or, like, uh, I mean, he's willing to listen. But his answers are so, like... Stupid. I'm sorry, but yeah. my dad's answers are not logical at all. And um, I, I, I just like the first uh, questions I asked him were like enough to prove to me that he's um, the way he's thinking. I don't know. It's it's uh, it's a little bit scary. Like literally, like you think everyone is corrupt except you, like everything like the bible the 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 torah i forgot you I see no no problem it. even if that is the logic no problem but can you still he answer about the stupid things in the quran let us say the well, christian books is corrupted the jews books corrupted everybody is corrupted except the muslims okay but then when we ask the muslim a question about muhammad saying something they will say the hadith is daif correct yeah I told him about when the goat ate the Quran and he was like, I mean, we already have en enough Quran to read than to add more. Like if you add more, maybe we wouldn't even be able to finish it. Like who will give you this kind of answer? Just but, please. But, like, but oh he is the God. one who is saying that they are corrupt. But now we find that the, the, the religion is corrupt because when they say the Hadith is Da'if, that's mean Hadith is Islam. Hadith is Islam and Hadith is Look, what Muhammad said, if you say to me that the hadith is corrupt, that's mean Islam is corrupt. So you accuse us of corruption. Same time, what about the sunset in the murky water? What about the I, prophet I explaining that? You, I will just tell you something, because I can I'm an Arab. I understand that you are also an Arab, but I'm an Arab female, and I know how Arab men are. Are they're so like. Mm, like they're so stubborn and they created this thing is hadith daif and hadith qawi there is no such a hadith daif and i don't it's know it's just hadith, an excuse like, correct it's, it's just an yes, excuse to run away from yeah, yeah they just did this like maybe read it through like people get got smarter basically and had more uh chance to read that shit and then they were like oh okay then this is maybe this maybe wouldn't be good to the religion and this maybe will be good to the religion so Put this as a daif and put this as a, a strong hadith. Like I don't actually believe in this thing. It's just an excuse, to be honest, to you know, hide more. You know what you just to prove that Muhammad is a liar. You know I don't know if you know the, the hadith where Muhammad he said that women are half a brain. So yeah, how I mean, come <laughs> how come a half a brain the oh men the men they can't answer her? I mean if she is half a brain, right? How come those Arab men, even their own, her family, they cannot answer the half a brain? She is answering, she is asking smart questions. They are giving stupid answers. So who is the one half a brain? And this is what Muhammad said in the hadith. This is Sahih hadith. Muhammad he claimed that the majority of women, they will go to hell. Okay, why Muhammad? Muhammad, he gave the excuse. He says they are ungrateful. And the top of that, they, are, they have half a brain and half religion, half wisdom have faith why because they, they have they have ministration and that keep them away from the prayer can you believe it that there's somebody well, claim that he is a smart now so the woman now she will go to hell because she have ministration is that her fault yeah i know i know <laughs> another thing is that um i asked my dad about like why no no this one i i'm so interested in because i'm not interested in arab men at all because i know how they are especially muslim arab men and i asked my dad so if a muslim woman want to marry like a christian or jewish person is it okay and he was i still remember in 2018 he was like no it's not it's only like uh, allowed for men and then i was like then why and i kept like insisting on my question and then he was like I, anyway do whatever you want and uh just like two weeks ago i re-asked him again and he was like yeah yeah it's 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 okay like 
as long as men can marry Christian or Jewish women, then uh, men, women can also marry a Christian and a Jewish man. But like, I don't think no, that's, not that's true. the case, right? Yeah, your prophet, uh, sorry, sorry, your father, he do not know what he's talking about. Uh, uh, yeah. Muslim men only is allowed to marry uh, women who they are Christian or Jews. And the purpose of that is to spread Islam and to increase the number. So they will I take mean, the women... Obvious. Yeah, they will take the women of the Christians, so they will have less women, and they will be able to have less children. But uh, Muslim women, they cannot marry Christians. So obviously, your father he do not know anything about Islam. You know, he's a Muslim by name, uh, you, obviously. But you know, no, he, yeah, he claims he knows because he's a Hajj, ah, and he, went to he Mecca? has like, we have those, uh, we have the those, hat? Uh, yeah, he's a has mm, yeah, and uh, but, he he have like those uh, religious books, like a lot of them. Like I don't know, some of them are even not allowed in Morocco, but he have them. Mm. So he claims that he knows, but when I asked him, he didn't give me any answer. So that gives me like a final answer, which is, I am so confused. I don't know now who to ask. Mm, okay. I. I, I was suggested to go and find like a, 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 a foreigner imam, but I know the answer. I know what they will say. So I'm just not convinced of this religion anymore. Let me, let me call Zakir Nag for you. Zakir, I... <laughs> you would like to talk to her? Christian Prince, first of all, I'm very busy right now. And I'm doing eating the cheese kebab. Like Zakir Nag, she is going to leave Islam. If you don't help her, please come on and talk to her. First of all, Christian Prince, Muslim women they are stupid. And I'm not going to listen to them. Never speak to Muslim women. They are of a brain. The Prophet of Allah said that they will go to hell. So if Zakir Naik, if you're a Muslim woman, they will go to hell. That means your mother, she is going to go to hell too. Christian Prince, my mother is already in hell because they gave birth to me. This is what they will say to you. Stupid answers. So let me ask you. You remind now. me of something. You remind me of something about my mom. Yeah. My mom, when I start asking those questions and because I, 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 I stop, um, I stop praying now. Mm -hmm. I I was a good prayer. Um, uh, I I'm also I like fasting, not only for the for the religion th part, but also for I don't know. I just like it. And uh, my mom kind of like felt that I stopped praying, and she was like, "Well, you know, if you don't pray out like and you did something bad about the religion, then we will all go to hell. Not only you, we will all get wow. punished." <laughs> and I was like. If, if if it's my it's like it's my thing like I'm a yeah, bad she, religious Islam why based, you will go to hell yeah Islam like, is based I'm on like, fear you know she's trying to make you feel oh guilty yeah she's trying to make you feel guilty with my respect to your mother she you, with my respect to your mother she's trying to play the devil now she's trying to be smart supposedly and she want to make you feel guilty that if you don't pray you know what because of you I will go to hell too which is even Islam doesn't teach that's not true but uh the, the question is, when you pray and you are repeating the same thing five times a day, how that I can know. be a prayer? How boring it is. Listen, if I call a person now, I say, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Okay. And then I call you back after two hours. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Before even you answer the phone, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, 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 Okay, now I call you three hours after. I mean, aren't you going to hang up on me? And you will hate to talk to me. And you will never listen to me. How boring it is to repeat the same prayer, which is not even a prayer. Because this is what Allah said, not what you said. It's about prayer, you know, because Muslims, they say like, oh, you have to pray so God will, you know, listen to you and like uh, uh, reply you basically like if you asked him about something he will give you right mm. but i was always like questioning then why christians why jewish why even atheists like they don't pray like we pray but still god like listen to them you know when they ask god or when they're like oh my god i'm in trouble or like i need this to be solved then god help them so there is something that it's not right right you see, first of all, when you pray, as an example, you pray like a noon time, right? Let us say the, the noon time prayer. Do you know that Allah He come only in the third part of the night to listen to the Muslim prayer? This one I don't know, but my mom told me that the angels, 
in uh, in Salat Al Asr, they switch. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, I used to believe, I swear I'm not lying. This was like, um, anyway, she used to tell me that, okay, there is morning angels and there is night angels. Right, so right. So morning angels, like the ones that, that they send in our sides, you know? Right. Like, she's like, those ones, they work from morning to the asr and then when you pray asr they will go to the sky and tell god the hasanat and say it you did ah. and then the, the other ones will come and like replace them. yeah it, <laughs> and then we'll work until see, night in, it's in the front of me i don't know if you can see the screen uh, there's a hadith yeah. here it says uh, the messenger of allah he said our lord the blessed the superior comes every night down in the, the nearest heaven nearest heaven to us yeah. when the last third of the night remains saying if there is anyone uh, anyone to invoke me so that I may re respond to his invitation so Allah come only at the third part of the night and which mean all the Muslim prayer is happening in the wrong timing and what your mom she said to me you about the angels they will switch but this is the hadith Allah he come in the third part of the night he is not waiting for the angels to come down to bring at the same time, the angels take them 1,000 years to go. The Quran says so. Uh, 1,000 years. So if you pray now, the angel, in order to take your prayer to Allah, is going to take him 1,000 years to go to report the prayer. You know? So what, what your mother, she's talking about, obviously she doesn't know what she's saying. But here, you know, the question is, why Allah, the need to come down to the, the, to the lowest heaven to hear the Muslims? Maybe have a bad reception. Can't he hear it from his chair? You know? Exactly. And uh, when Muhammad he says the third part of the night, well, we don't have one night time zone, right? We have many. I mean, when it's daytime in here, it is night in different uh, different place. Yeah. So that's mean Allah like a yo-yo, keep coming up and coming down, you know? Because he have to come in every place in the third part of the night. But because Muhammad, he thinks the earth is a flat and all of us, we have one time, so Allah will come down in the third part of the night. And can the Muslim, they say this is a weak hadith? No, this is Al-Bukhari. And the same hadith is exist in Sahih Muslim. Islam is, yeah, a, like... Islam is a stupid religion. Very stupid. I mean, this is the, 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 this is the religion of stupidity, what you can say. You know, they, they ask you to pray at night. Like, I've been asked from my mom. My dad never, they don't, my, my dad doesn't care about my religious side. He's just like, he's doing his thing, you know. But my mom is more like, yeah, you have to pray. You have to do it, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, I've been asked from my mom to ask to pray at night so many times. Like, yo, wake, like, especially in Ramadan, she'd be like, wake up at three like to pray oh my god i'm like so sleepy like why there is morning and there is night so we could wake up in the morning do our yeah, because, thing maybe uh, even pray if you stay late allah and... this is the only time allah he come down to the earth allah exactly, allah like... is a allah is a batman he work only at night time you know yeah well uh, uh, if, if there is any question i you know you, you need me to answer you to help you i will be happy to answer you um uh for now i'm still like because um i would say i, I left islam but i still have that problem because i told you i was a good muslim i before i eat i say like bismillah before i do anything i say bismillah before i even enter my room or my house i say that i also like do you enter the to... do you enter the bathroom with your left foot or right foot i i never paid attention to that I, my mom actually look, look look they're actually it's true like my mom told me about it like she said that you have to use your left foot but to be honest you know i i, I never but but, paid but did she did she tell you why uh yeah she said that uh shaitan, you know uh, the, the shaitan stories anyway uh, <laughs> anyway i'm i'm really like now I, finding i, I, a I know problem. you are you are shy to say why because it's dirty but this is the most stupid thing. Like you enter the bathroom and if you don't say certain words, shaitan, he will play with the anus of the person. This is the most stupid religion ever. So, but you are a smart person. I mean, uh, uh, how you how you can accept for a second to be part of such a cult? I mean, isn't it obvious? It's stupid. Oh, you see the thing? 
I I've been asking. Uh, I, I wasn't actually interested in even knowing more. Like before, uh, before I went abroad, um, I never was like I never thought of asking more. I'm just like, okay, I will do what they say, and it's okay. But if I had like some big question, I would just go ask my dad or like go to search in Google. But I mean, you know, like the answers are never convincing. And when I came uh, to China, um, I had like foreigner friends, of course, and they are like Christians or whatever. And I like with such having those, you know, they are asking me about my religion. And I, I never had, of course, the answers because I don't know much. So I asked my dad. And then my dad, when he answered me, I try to think about it and I'm like, okay. And then I tell my friends, but then they're still not convinced. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make any sense. How come? And then I start thinking more and more. And uh, somebody introduced you to me. So I start watching your videos and it suddenly all made sense. And that's why I'm like, okay, so I have to leave. <laughs> but yeah, this 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 still I'm I'm now still having a problem with what I told you, like the Bismillah thing, and I I think I don't know what to say. Like in the name of Lord, I don't know. I'm no, like it's, you so see, it's, it's okay, you know. I mean, I understand. Like there's there's th it's the things we use to in the language, but it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, you know, this is not the this is not the issue. You see, we don't focus on the let us say in. In, in things is, is meaningless. We focus in, in the core. So in your heart, do you th really think Islam is uh, from God? No, 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 that's no, it. no, you, no. Well, it's that's, impossible. Yeah. It's it's a man. It's 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 a man who wrote this, and it's obvious because there is nothing that helps women in Islam. I've been asking this all the time you know there's good but, things in Islam like, about women as an example your husband can beat you don't you like that <laughs> yeah i i told my dad i was like why men can uh, beat women my dad he never touched my mom but anyway he was like well you have to beat this ones who doesn't listen and i was like but why would you even beat her like divorce her isn't it easier like if she's a is she's like really, really bad, and she doesn't listen at all. Then just and what? Uh, what about what, what if the man is bad? Can, why the woman? She can't beat him. If this is the scenario. Well, my, my dad, my dad, for him, he was like, ah, divorce him, or like you beat him too, like have a fight there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but it's not an issue of Islam, you know. Uh, I know, I yeah. know. So, but you see, the logic is is very awkward. If the woman, she is not obedience or even do you feel rebellion as you can beat her but what if the man is an idiot can the wife she beat him no so islam is a man made religion you know i remember yeah. actually once a lady like you she called me and she left islam life on a year and she told me the reason i'm leaving islam because islam is mad made religion made by the man for the man it's not for us as women do you agree yeah like just just look just look in all I, I also start thinking like why all not without without any exception why all islamic countries are the worst like especially when it comes to women rights and like what happens to women and not only like poverty let's not talk about poverty but like also the women like the women there are suffering yeah like suffering actually i actually like, said I never saw a, 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 a suffering woman as much as a believing woman. Yeah, so she's right. Yeah, I'm so I'm so um, I want to ask her too why she's Muslim. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad because now you already said uh, that you don't believe Islam is from God. That's mean you are an ex-Muslim already. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I look. If I don't say that, you wouldn't answer me. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, for how long you are watching my videos? And now my it's like I think um, around a month or more than a month now. So, is is that yeah. is that because of my channel? You are convinced Islam is false? Uh, no. Like I've seen also how Muslim interact with you. Okay. And yeah, that's me yeah, because I, of because of my I'm channel. Like, then. Okay. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. That's that's obvious. Like they would 
answer you like this and this is how the answers will be so yes yeah, because of your channel yeah well i'm glad that you are out of islam and you are listening and i will be happy to help you in any question you have feel free to call me anytime if you have a question and for me as a christian i would love to invite you to accept my lord and my savior the messiah you see we as a christians we love the muslims we don't hate them and this is the difference between islam and christianity in christianity we've been ordered to love even our enemy jesus said love your enemy plus those who curse you so i say to you my sister if you allow me to call you sister uh, yeah, sure. i invite you to accept jesus as your savior because you will see not only a different is the same as different between light and darkness between christ and his teaching and his ethic and his love and so-called islam or muhammad in christianity you are a child of god you are not a slave of allah in christianity you are a queen you are not a servant in christianity even jesus himself our lord he is born from a woman so in christianity we don't put women down and we don't say they will go to hell in christianity jesus said he described the church as a lady and he is as the husband so this is how much the, the 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 church for us is a holy name is not just a name so in christianity the woman she is a church she is the church of the man she is not a woman to use and abuse when a man and a woman they get married the bible teach that they will become one a man he cannot marry for why because this is nothing but a lost a true man he will have only one woman because what four women can do and one woman cannot that is just a lost so in christianity you will be the queen of your house you will be the only lady for your husband he is not allowed to lie to you and you are not allowed to lie to him and you will live as one entity not two person yet you are two people but you will be one and that's what christ would do to your family and even your children they will be different in ethic in lifestyle in belief in a practice for they are new creatures new creation you know i don't know if you heard a christian they say we are born again did you hear that before yeah what do you think yeah. about this word born again what do you think uh i don't know i was never I, um i was never like do you know what 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 they meant by born again? Like when they are Christians, or when uh, when they become Christians, or like yeah, when you become a Christian, Christian, when you become a Christian, you are born again. That mean that with the Messiah and by the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will be a new person. You are born again. For sure, we are not going to be born the same as a child from his mother, but we are yeah. born with god by the spirit of god so we will be new new people will you will renew our life jesus he bring you to humanity back you know evil made us evil make us ugly make us disgusting greedy selfish in christ you will become a new person that's why you will be born again so if you if you if you uh, uh, if you like to know more about jesus and you are interested i will be so happy to help you I actually got um uh, I have like a bible here right. I I actually I'm looking for an Arabic bible but I and it's okay I have like an English bible mm -hmm. I'm trying to like understand what's going on there um it, uh, to be honest Christianity is convincing but I'm still trying to like take my time in understanding I mean there is no other religion I can join to uh but it's like after you know because islam is a lie and as long as islam took a lot from christianity so it means that christianity maybe is uh, the origin, something the original thing yeah the yeah the origin yeah. so it's just that i i want to understand one thing is that how jesus is god because this thing i i heard you i you talked about it so many times but still it doesn't like i'm trying to understand yeah, let, it more. let us say what what is god when we say god what what god means what do you think what when we say god 
God is like something that, well, it doesn't have a shape and of course it doesn't have a size. So maybe it's bigger than even anything that you can even like imagine. Maybe he's, yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> you see, until now you are still thinking the same as Muslims they think. You know, you're, Look, you're I'm talking. Still, no, no, hold I'm on, hold on. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not judging you. I'm not. You know, I'm just trying to help you. So when we say God, you know, in Christianity we have different description for God. As an example, if we go and we read in the Bible, it says, "God is love." God <laughs> is love. You see, what you focus in is a shape, is a look, is etc. This is not really what God is. Christianity have different definition for God. If you go to First John, the book of First John, we will see it says God and is love, and all who live in in love live in God, and God live in them. This is extremely beautiful. So our God is a loving God, and He Himself is love. In all other cults, they focus in a look legs hands how big he is in christianity we focus that god is love because love is the most extreme power make us different from other creatures or other creation animals are animals they have emotion yes they have like you know but love is something different different story a human being he have a gift he receive it from God. Where he receive it? Only from God. Only God can give love. So when you are a person who live in love, you are living in God, the Bible said. For God is love. So in Christianity, love make you a high, noble person. You are out of this world. You are flying. You are not normal like those people who hate and when I uh, hatred inside them, they want to kill each other, they want to go for war. You are living in love and you are enjoying love. And this is what Christianity will do to you. God is almighty, yes. He is all powerful, yes. I explained to you that God, he don't mistreat women or men. When they ask yeah. Jesus, what, who is going to marry this woman? You know, when she go to heaven, who is going to be her husband? Who is going to have her? He said he and she they will be the same as angels. They will not get married. So you and me, we will always be equal in the front of the eyes of God. Doesn't matter if you are a male or a female, still me and you, we are a children of God. So in Christianity, you go back to your place. Your place is what? To be the child of God. So this is why I'm asking you, if you like to know about Jesus, because I would like really to see you become a child of God, to be someone special, and to be uh, living living as a special person, not only being a special. Because a Christian, you know, in Christ we are really new people. That's why we spoke about born again. Uh, when when Jesus said, "Love your enemy," if we practice just one sentence of Jesus' teaching, all mankind history will change. Imagine, because nobody hate anybody. Everybody love everybody. Nobody have enemies. No criminals, no thieves, no liars, no cheating, no war. Why? Because everybody love everybody. You know? Yeah, but like CP, you didn't you just you didn't answer me like how come Jesus can be God? Why not? Because Jesus no, can be God. Just... I will tell you why. Well, how we know uh, who is God or not? I can say I'm God too, and you can say I'm God. But Jesus is the person who was able to resurrect people from death. Even the stupid Quran confirmed that Jesus can make from the mud a bird. Correct? So mm -hmm. you need to ask yourself, what is the root of those stories? Are they just stories or they are real? So Jesus is a cre the creator. Jesus is a healer. Jesus, he can heal you spiritually mentally physically jesus he can do what nobody can do jesus controlled the nature jesus controlled the earth jesus he forgive your sin jesus he gave us a better life so being god or saying i'm god 
it's an easy talk. I mean, to, 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 let us say talk is cheap, right? Anyone can say that. But Jesus is the only one. He proved to be God because he went to death and he came back from death. And people, they saw his disciples, they witnessed him. And even thousands of people, they saw him after he was crucified. So Jesus, he proved not by saying I am God, but by doing what God do. So when we say how Jesus can be God, I mean myself, I ask myself this question. What is the reason for me to believe that Jesus is God? Just because he said the beautiful words? Is that because he say beautiful statement? No, because Jesus, he can do what nobody can do. Things only belong to God. They belong to Jesus. This is why Jesus said, from their <clears throat> fruits, you shall know them. And this is how we know who is Jesus, that he is God. Because his fruits, resurrection, healing, making the blind see. You touch just his clothes, you are healed. He resurrected people from death. He created eyes. He gave eyes. He gave life. He said, I am the life and the resurrection. And he did that. So not because he said, but because he did too. Even in the cross, Jesus, he said, because he loved everybody. He says, forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. So when we speak about Jesus as God, it's not just a statement. It is a witnesses, people who live with him, and they die for him. Why the disciples of Jesus, they are willing to be killed. Even they fed them to the animals. Imagine, they come to you and they say, hey, the, the Roman, they arrest you. They say, if you deny Jesus, we will let you go. If you don't, we will throw you to the lion and people will be watching and he will he will eat you alive why a person like this will be willing to die for a lie because they are yeah. witnessing what happened they saw what happened they are true believers this is why the question always will be you see those are not going to fight so they can get the booty like muhammad and muhammad he promised them if you die you will get 70 diversions no they are not fighting with swords they are taking them literally and they are thrown to the animals and all what they need to do to be saved from being killed and eaten by animals is just to deny Jesus but they refuse such a faith have to have a reason because they saw and they witness that he is true I, I have I, I have one question it's a little bit stupid because it comes from Islam no, it's, it's not okay. no Christian problem. No problem. yeah it's like it's like uh in in I, as I told you, the story is different. And in Islam, they said that uh, Jesus, he, well, first, the name is different. And that's a, that's only, that's a one problem. And the second thing is that they said that he talked when his mom brought him, like when she gave birth to him. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 this is not true. Or is it true? I'm you see, just like, here, 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 here you need to ask yourself uh, another question. If this is a story, is it true? Why the Christian, they will hide it? I mean, this will confirm even that Jesus is God for them more. You know what I mean? Because he did not wait like other people, like he, they are. They grow, they learn how to speak, they learn language. Uh, this person, he is born, he speaks languages. Not only that, he speaks wisdom. Muhammad, he waited 40 years. 40 years. And then the angel came and he spoke to him and he squeezed him. Still, Muhammad it's don't so understand. Weird. Yeah, so how it's come so Jesus? Weird. How come Jesus in the cradle, yet he is talking in the cradle? So this is story, we believe it's coming from you know fabricated stories, and there's no reason for the Christians to hide it because that will make even uh, our our uh, like uh, we have more proof that Jesus uh, is more powerful, right? I mean, why you want to take it off? You know, you know what yeah. I mean? Like this will make it even more will make Jesus more amazing, but we reject, and this is additional proof that the Christians, they have the true book. Otherwise, why we will take such a story away when this story can help us to convince people more to believe in Jesus? But the reason we did um, not accept it because it's false. How, you know, how Muhammad, he knew this, when Muhammad he got those stories from? Muhammad, he never saw Jesus. He never been in the time of Jesus. He don't learn Hebrew. He don't speak Hebrew. He don't speak a Greek. So where he got this from? He heard it from people. Well, he heard it from people. Well, you see, because <laughs> he said that God talked to him, so that's why. Yeah, people the same would as he said. It. The same as he said about Alexander the Great. He found the sun set in the murky water. Right, when they asked him, 
Tell us about Zul Qarnayn. He said, I will tell you about him. He is a person, Allah told Muhammad supposedly, that he is a person, he took away, and then Allah gave him the way, like which means he gave him the power, ability, etc. And then he keep walking, keep walking, until he found where the sun set, and he found it sitting in murky water. But the story of Alexander the Great, this is a story, is written by somebody from Syria. It's a fiction story about Zulqarnayn. Zulqarnayn is a real person. I told my dad. Is Alexander I the Great. I told my dad. Yeah. I told my dad about this. I was like, okay, so this, I told him, you know, the story of Dul Qarnayn in Quran, and he was like, yeah, what's wrong with it? And I was like, okay, so this story is actually not real, and it's just like a fiction story from Jewish people. Like, they, they no, no, no. tell it to. This is not from the Jewish people. I don't know. No, the Jewish, actually, the Jewish people, they got him busted. They came to Muhammad and they told him, Tell us the story of a prophet Zul Qurnayn. So Muhammad now is as a fool. He prophet. took he took the bite, you know, like like yeah. you know. Sometimes Muslims they call me and I say to them, tell me uh, verses from the Bible of Trump, and they start like they claim to be ex Christians or something. So they start saying, yeah, I know the book, which is obviously they are false. So this is what the Jews they did to to, to Muhammad. They told him, tell us the story of a prophet Zul Qurnayn. Muhammad. He did not answer right away. He waited for a few weeks until he got more information. And then he came back and now he went to tell them the story. Allah told me. But the Jews, they are laughing because there is no such a prophet. And Zul Qurnayn is not a prophet. So he took the story, which is very well known, a fiction story between the people, that he is a person who went all the way. He found where the sun set. He found where the sun rise. He built a dam between us and the, the creatures. They are called Gog and Magog. And then Muhammad, supposedly, he gave them the answer. But the, but then by hearing the answer, the Jews, they die laughing. For this is absolutely hilarious, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, th there's, a, there's a guy, his name is Yasser Qadi. I don't know if you know him. He made a video oh. about Gog and Magog. And if you, if you watch it, you will die laughing. The Muslims, they are trying to find excuse why we cannot find Enten now, the dam which is built by Gog, uh, built by Zulqarnayn, for Gog and Magog, where are they? Especially the number of Gog and Magog is one to one thousand, which means right now we are eight billion human in this earth. According to <laughs> Muhammad, one human equal to there's one thousand Gog and Magog. So if we are if we are eight billion, they are eight trillions. So where we can find them? Where, where is the dam? We have a map, we have satellite for every spot in this earth, right? So where is this dam? We cannot find it. It's a fiction, stupid story. So the Jews always, that's why Muhammad hated the Jews. They got him busted. They give him a trap. He say the stupid answer and they start laughing at him. The same but as- But you see when I- Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I understand, I understand the whole story because I watched your video when you talked about it. But when I told my dad, he was like, well, I was like, but this is a fiction story. And he was like, uh, anyway, fiction or not, God is trying to teach us something from it, uh -huh. which is what, you, okay, what we be, learn. What we uh, learn from the story, nothing. I mean, stupid story. What, the sun set in murky water. What the heck is that? It's a spring of I don't know. not only even an ocean, like the Muslim, they try to answer. They say, no, no, no. This is from the perspective of Zulqarnayn. The verse in the front of us, where it says perspective, he says he found it set in a spring of murky water, boiling water. And not only that, he found near it people. So we are talking about a location. He found near it. What perspective? So they try to, 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 to cover up, but nobody can cover up. They are out of duct tape. And this is why you, because you are a smart person, you cannot take it no more, and you decide to go out of this religion. Yeah, now the thing is that I'm I'm really like I I don't know how to face my parents to be honest. Do you, I my, do you like I, to invite them to, to talk to me? Do you like to invite them to talk uh, to me? Look, look, I really want you to talk to my dad, but yeah? he can't speak English. I will talk to him in Arabic. Okay, then that's perfect. I really want I want to see his answers when you will ask him because I'm for me I'm I'm not really I I you, wasn't. You, and you I'm speak still Arabic very well, right? You speak Arabic very well. Oh. Uh, Oh, well, he speaks better Arabic than me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, but but, so, if, but yeah. if I talk to him in Arabic, he will understand what we are saying? Oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you understand, but you don't speak very good. 
Uh, like my Arabic, like the Arabic Arabic is not good, but my dialect is good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, if, if you um, want, you can invite your dad and your mom even too. I will be happy to talk to them. I will speak to them too. Very nice. I promise you. Just tell uh, okay. me. Just tell me in Skype that uh, you know my dad. You know, agreed to talk to you, and I will be very respectful for them, and I will be do. I will do my best to help them uh, to understand. And we will speak in Arabic, and we can translate to people later what we are saying. No problem. Sure. Thank you so much. You are welcome. I appreciate Absolutely. It. If you have, yeah. if you have Muslim friends, if you have anyone in relatives, sisters, do you have a sisters, brothers? I have one sister. I have one brother, and I'm I Bring them. because I left now. Yes, I left now. I'm trying to find a way to um try to share your video with them or something. Because I know if I shared your video, they will start telling my parents, oh, this girl, she wants to do something, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, um, I will, I will. But you, you, the only, the only thing is that you have to talk to my dad. That's the only, I think, the solution. I have yeah. no problem to talk to him, trust me. And I will be so patient with him. I will speak nice to him. Uh, and I will be... Uh, happy to help him in any way i'm sure he will get a lot of benefits from talking to me regardless of the result but i think he will leave islam if he if he take what the conversation seriously you know if he is he, if he is sincere to know the truth then he will leave islam i i hope i hope he could like use more logic <laughs> because you know Arabic. no problem you see sometimes you see I, I don't use my logic by the way when i speak to people like if I, if your dad call me, I will not use my logic. I will listen to him first, and I will use his logic to prove him wrong. I don't use my logic. You see, uh, this is the mistake of many people. They do, they use their own logic, but that will not work. So I used the people logic. When people they throw something on me, I just throw it back. You know, so just leave that for me, and you will see. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm not gonna waste any of your time. You need no, you are not. You are welcome. Things. Actually, I I believe everybody here is happy to have you. Hey, people here, say hello to our sister. She is not a Christian yet, but we pray that she will be soon Christian. And even if she is not, God, God, our Lord, He order us to love everybody. So show your love to our sister here. Welcome her, and tell her she is welcome. You are happy to hear her voice. Just share with her how you feel really about this wonderful conversation. We are happy for you, even though I do not know yeah, your thank name. You so we, are, much. we are so happy for you. And I was when I heard you first time, like uh, you, you were jumping. I was like, "What happened?" You know, like you, hey, you know, like I don't know what happened. I thought somebody. <laughs> no, because I, I've been trying to call you for a long time, and I, I, I how think come? You called uh, this me is the first twice. time I get a call from you. I did not get a call before. No, 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 no. I tried to call you many times, and I think you called me twice. But I was. Oh, you mean to, oh, to, you mean to, you mean today today. Uh, not today, not today. Today, yes, I tried like two times before this okay. one. But like, uh, it's been now a week. I'm trying to call you. All right. <laughs> yeah. You called me twice, but uh, I told you yeah, I was I see in you class. Call me, you called me uh, uh, yesterday, and you called me. And before me, yesterday, uh, you called me Wednesday. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I see it now. Yeah, but you see, I don't know. Uh, there's many people they lie. I mean, there's a guy he's yeah, mentally yeah. ill. He called me. He said the f word. You know, I hang up on him. So uh, this is why sometimes I ignore some text. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad I I called you today. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I feel so much relieved now after I talk to you. It's just that um, it's you like how am I supposed to do with the thing that I told you? It's like say the Bismillah thing and uh, before eating and stuff. Uh, you know, really... you, you speak English. Say in the name of the Lord. Say okay. If you okay. if if you want to be even do it better, say Jesus in the name of Jesus. <laughs> uh, I mind to be honest yeah okay yeah, I just, well you know for yeah. me before i pray i pray in my heart usually i don't pray i don't make loud if i'm a restaurant i don't make people even notice you know uh but i say thank you lord for for the food you give us very simple two words you know you do not need to make a story and etc so you can use the word lord and try from your heart to speak to the lord the true lord and he would answer you i'm sure he will you know just, uh, this this is what 
Uh, thank you. And the second one is that um, the for fasting, I told you before, it, even if the not for the religious part, but I kind of like like fasting. So I just I'm just asking, like, is Christianism has like fasting? Or yeah, something? we have. We have. You see, in fact, actually, some churches depend in, uh, uh, you know, uh, in churches. But uh, major churches, they fast more than 90 days a, a year, not uh, not 30 days. But our fasting is different. You see, the Muslim, when they fast, they don't fast really. You eat more. Because what, I know, I know. Yeah, because yeah. what you do, you switch the day to night. And at night, now your mom, she will make all the shish kebab and the hummus. We start cooking from Yeah, so in the in the in the in, in, in Ramadan, you get you get fat, right? <laughs> yeah, like we start cooking around like two until seven thirty. Like yeah, we're so just you, cooking. So you are eating yeah. more and you are eating more expensive food too, because they spend more money on that month, right? And the price of food go crazy if you live in the Middle East. Because simply uh, Islam fasting is a fake fasting, it's the opposite. That's why the price of food go crazy because people are buying more. If they are really yeah. truly fasting, then the price of food should go down because nobody buying too much food. But because they are eating way more, prices go so crazy, and even people borrow money to cover the amount of Ramadan. But in Christianity, this. in Christianity, even you can fast any day you want, you know. But fasting, the most important fasting is, is fasting from evil, is fasting from being filthy. Is fasting from hate, is fasting from hurting. It's, this is the most fasting. The rest, the, the body fasting, this is just a practice of being disciplined, how to control yourself, how to be patient, and it, it helps you even if you want to uh, like to, to, show, to show yourself that I can practice some, let us say, training to my body so I can make my body under my control. And that help you can fight against sin but the most important fasting is not food the most important fasting is fasting from evil because what the benefit of somebody he fast he even pray but then after he finish both those things he is the most harmful evil person or he start cursing people so in my country like in in ramadan people start fighting like oh, even yeah. more because Gross. some of them like they have to smoke and stuff and because they are fasting they don't smoke and then they just start like getting mad over yeah, they use nothing it, they use it as an excuse even for violence like don't yeah. talk to me i'm yeah. fasting man come on you know and they start even this they even even crimes if you see if you search on google you will find that the crimes increase three four times more in the month of ramadan in morocco in tunisia in algeria in all yeah. islamic countries why because uh, you know the hypocrisy there's a lot of hypocrisy yeah. because if you are fasting fasting from what exactly you fasting from food well you know what i eat once a day i fast every day that's me based on the muslim logic i'm fasting every all my life so uh, uh, this is not really what make you a good person but mm. fasting is not what make you a good person is being good to others not fasting jesus said it's not what go inside your mouth but it is what go from your mouth what go out from your mouth so i can eat the most clean food i can fast i but then my mouth is filthy my mouth is dirty my mouth harming everybody and even maybe i harm people physically so what the benefit of this fasting so the most important fast is the fast of the heart of being clean and clear in our heart that is the true fasting otherwise all fasting is useless yeah you said you said like people borrow money for in ramadan they borrow money even like in eid al-adha to buy the udhiyah like yeah because, come on, the, because it's too much expensive you know the life is so much oh expensive God. and then and then this uh, this religion became uh, uh, like a problem because uh, and not only that you know you know like you are coming from the east like me so like now we have a tradition we have to invite the cousins and his wife and his children yeah. and then we invite us and when we cannot serve normal food we have to serve extra expensive food and that make these occasions are so expensive 
But, but you know, in Morocco, yeah. so many people, like so many men, especially men who has like families, they suicided because of Eid al-Adha, because they can't uh, provide the money to buy Udhiyah. Like I was like so sad when I heard this kind of stories, really. Like they they suicide just because they can't buy Udhiyah for one year. Yeah, you see. And now it's not. Now it's not because of the religion, it's because of the society. Oh, I have to bring this big sheep because our neighbors got a bigger one. So like if I brought a small sheep, they will say yeah. that's you and you and you. Like, I'm really you know, like, in, wow. When Christianity, in Jesus, he said, when you fast, you don't even tell people. You don't tell anyone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Here they like to brag about it. Oh, yeah. you're fasting. I'm fasting too. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, and Jesus, he warned us not to be like the hypocrite. Who, when they fast, they tell everybody, and when they pray, they pray in the corner. So we as a Christian, if we pray, we are not going to tell everybody, I'm going to go to pray. He says, when you want to pray, go to your closet, which means your private room. Uh, if you fast, wash your face, don't show that you are, you, 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 because what you are doing is between you and your Lord have nothing to do with the people. Islam is a show-off religion. Everything is a show off. That's why, you, as you because say, because it came from yeah, because it, because it comes from there. You know, I, I I don't mean no offense, but like uh, Saudi Arab people who brought this religion, like it comes from there, and they are like this. So of course, what do you expect? Muhammad is a shallow. Muhammad is a very shallow person, and if you ask me, the reason Muhammad he keep giving too much things to the Muslim to do, like. Uh, like um, the prayer, the evolution, etc. It just to keep you busy from thinking about him being false or not. He gave you too many things to do. So now you are busy with Islamic rituals, but not with God. You are just busy with ritual to the point, as we said, if you want to go in the bathroom, you have to make a prayer. If a man want to have sex, he have to make a certain prayer. Otherwise, Shaitan will share his wife with him. Crazy yeah. stuff, you know. So all this stuff is just to make you live in fear, as your mother she said to you, if you don't pray, all of us we will go to hell. So your mother she is trying to make you feel guilty and live in fear in order to keep you a Muslim. This is Islam, is what your mother she did. Fear, guilt, and then give donation, build a mosque, then you go to heaven. But and us... talking about building mosques, really, I don't understand why Muslims are trying so hard to build mosques abroad, but they don't allow other religions to build their 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 buildings in because, their country. Because Islam is a hypocrite, evil religion. This is why, and they are, you know, and it... because they are afraid. You know, they are afraid that their religion cannot handle it, and people will leave Islam if they see the truth, if they see other uh, the true uh, teaching of Christianity. Like in Morocco, they, you know, made, they made a law, yeah. as I remember. If somebody left Islam, he, you know, he will go to jail. You know? we, it's not only that. It's not only that. Like the, we had, we had some uh, churches there, and I think they are clo closed now. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't. I've never seen them open. And another thing is that when you, if you want to get married, you have like it, for for me because I used to be Muslim. I came from a Muslim family. If my husband wants to marry me, he needs to bring like a paper of a proof that he's like if he's a foreigner, Yama, he's a Christian. Oh, well, what? You have to bring a, a paper that he's, he converted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. they would not approve your marriage. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what is this? Yeah. But you know, at the same time, I met. Thousands and thousands of Moroccans they left Islam, you know. Uh, by the way, there is a yes. there is websites. I don't know if you know them. Uh, maybe I can search for them and share them with you. They have a lot of a Christian songs in Moroccan language. Do you know that? Uh, I I don't actually. Do you know? Uh, do you know? Uh, do you know Akhrashid? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't really talk to Moroccans because I'm scared of this thing. Because they judge a lot, especially the Muslim ones. Yeah. 
so I, I don't try to make any friends with Moroccans or anything or Arab. Yeah. Like I but don't those, have any. You know, uh, <laughs> there is a program. It's called uh, a Brother Rashid program. He is an ex-Muslim. He's a Moroccan. Wonderful oh. person, you know. You can watch his. You can okay. search his videos. But maybe if your Arabic is not so good, but I will give you a link actually. Uh, I just search. There's tons of uh, songs. Uh, this website is just uh, Christians uh, uh, convert. They are ex-Muslims and they became from Morocco and they become Christians and they have tons of Christian songs. I just uh, gave you the link. You can open it later. And I'm sure, okay. you will, I'm sure you will like those songs. Just listen to that. Maybe they will help you in a spiritual way. Okay, thank you. And for before sleeping, do do usually Christians like read something? Because I used to read Quran before I sleep. Well, all, and now because yeah, all, <laughs> always you see this is something personal. Uh, yeah, you read when, but you do not need to read. You can speak to the Lord directly. However, it's you know we encourage always the Christian to read every day something from the Bible. Something will help them because you know Christianity. Is a is a personal relationship with the Lord, not things you must do. Which mean, you might feel today you want to read a verse from here or there, something fit with your problems. The Bible help you, you know. So, in Christianity, we have relationship. Our belief is based in relationship, personal relationship with the Lord, not in rituals. Reading is you trying to learn more and to be inspired by God teaching that will be wonderful but anytime you want before you sleep you can speak to the Messiah you can pray to him you can make your wish you, you know, make he will make you feel better and you can give your heart to him however always you can read whatever you want but because you are now new you, you are trying to learn what well, do you have to start from the beginning like I advise you to read uh, you know uh, from John read from chapter 1 the Bible is okay. very deep not the same as the Quran city book it's very deep book it's very spiritual and try to be spiritual when you read not just read words and if you have any uh, questions anytime you can call me yeah because really I have been struggling with this since I, I, I decided to leave Islam because I, I told you I'm I used to be like a good Muslim and before I sleep, I don't know if you know, but like Muslims like have some surah they will read before sleeping, you know, like eight kursi and uh, yeah, no, no, we, we don't go by those things because those things are fake, you know. Because, uh, if you see the Muslim, they read because they fear the those kursi and stuff because they are fear from bewitching and genie and stuff, you know. I never, I never read them for fear, I just read them because, um. My mom told me too. <laughs> this is first, and second is that I got used to it to the point that if I don't read it, I don't but, sleep but if well. But if you if you read them, they are stupid. I mean, what what is uh, special about them? Give me one. Give well, me a, give never... me a, give me a chapter you like, just to go there. Just... No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not trying really. I'm just telling you my story. I'm not yeah, trying to. I think no, no. I'm any... saying. I'm saying maybe because you are used to it, you grow up this this way, so it became like a. Okay. Ayat al-Kursi. Ayat al-Kursi. All right. Let us go to Ayat al-Kursi. And now don't blame me when we start laughing. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's just I got used to it. You know, like, a, let's say like a lullaby for me now. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of find another way to replace it and read something that it's actually will help me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if we go to... Uh, uh, to Ayat al Kursi, even the names of the Quran, I mean, verses they are really very, very funny. Uh, let us see. Sunnah wa la no. This is chapter 2, verse number 2255. Allah, there is no God but He, the living, the self submit, sub, uh, sub, uh, subesting. Substain, eternal, no slumber can size him, nor sleep. He is uh, uh, his are all things in heaven and in the earth. Who is there can intercede uh, in his presence, except his permission? He knows what is uh, 
uh, you know, uh, what is between his their hand and what is bet behind their hands. His chair is in the size of the earth and the heaven, you know, uh, mm. and extend over the heaven. But this is very stupid, by the way, if we uh, describe it. And then, I mean, what, what we learn from this, you know? So it is he, Allah, but who is talking Allah? Why Allah saying it is he? Didn't he say I? And then he don't sleep. Okay, and, you know, nothing take him not to sleep. And then everything belong to him. Okay, wonderful. And then uh, who can do intercede for him? Nobody can intercede. But different verse in the Quran says you can intercede. Isn't Muslim they believe that Muhammad intercede? So this is have a contradiction. And then here he speak about that his chair is so big the same size as the earth and the heaven but this is stupid because the earth if and he the has heaven, a chair he's sitting that's stupid <laughs> yeah because the earth is inside the heaven and the heaven is way bigger than the earth so if his size is his chair is in the size of the earth and the heaven you know because the verse says clearly we saw kursi the size of his chair is the same as the earth and the heaven so muhammad you think that the earth is maybe like a, a, a square and then the sky in the top of it is exactly the same size and allah sitting in the top of that chair that is very stupid you know and who is talking is allah so this verse means nothing useless what that can do with you the same one the muslim they kiss the black stone you ask them why the black stone you know they say uh, uh, well, because uh, Allah, he sent the black stone. I say, okay, so what? You know, so all those rituals are false. They are meaningless. And especially, you are not even praying. This is what Muhammad said 1400 years ago, claiming that Allah said that to him. But there is no way Allah is talking, saying, Allah, there is no God but he. You know, why Allah saying that? You know, shouldn't he say, I am Allah, there is no God but I? Instead, he's saying, Allah, there is no God. And I, I, I cannot understand in Arabic how you say, you start with saying Allah. What is the what, what, what is the mean of this? Allah. Suddenly, he says Allah. There is no God but he. Okay, who is talking? Yeah, look, thinking about it, why in some verses he's saying Allah and um, some other verses he's talking with the I? Yeah, you see? I'm like so but, but this confused. Is, but the, like, yeah, because Muhammad, he forget to switch. You know, Muhammad now is making Quran. So he keeps, he, he, he forget to say, I am Allah, you know. So he says, Allah said, he doesn't say the word Allah, but he's claiming Allah speaking. Allah, and what, okay, shouldn't you say something? Allah, there is no God but him. What is that? What, what is the sentence? Where is the sentence? Allah, there's no, don't, shouldn't you say Allah, he said, there's no God but him. But he is saying, Allah, there is no God but Him. That's somebody taking shahada. So why Allah taking shahada to who? To Himself? You know, He's witnessing that there's no God but Him. Actually, there's a verse in the Quran. It says, "Shahid Allahu an la ilaha illahu." Allah, He took shahada. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I, I don't think I heard this one before. Yeah, but why yeah, Allah will why Allah will take uh, why Allah will take shahada? Here we go, chapter three, verse number eighteen. Read it. Shahid Allah. <laughs> Shahid Allah and la ilaha illahu wal malaika wa ulul alm. So uh, uh, Allah witness, you know, the translation is false, saying there is no God but He, and then they says that is the witness of Allah. No, the Arabic says Allah He witness, there is no God but He. You who and why Allah saying shahada? He's saying shahada to who? You know, I mean he's he's trying to prove himself to be God to who? Uh, you know, if I witness, I witness in front of higher authority. Like, you take me to the judge, you say to me, okay, say the shahada, what you saw, what you witness. But Allah, he bear witness to whom? This is the Quran, doesn't make sense. So when when a Muslim, he repeat before he sleep, etc. He is not even reading anything. Or, you know, like... The... Yeah, you know, the thing is that you are not allowed to think... <clears throat> This this one, a lot of people would not understand it because I told you now I live in China and China is a communist country. It's also applying the same rule. You are not allowed to think. You are only allowed to listen. So maybe you will listen and read this thing, but you are not allowed to understand the meaning. 
because if you understand the meaning, he then will, it he will, will leave. Make sense. Yeah, the Quran, chapter five, verse number one o one, it says, "Ask not questions." And verse number 02, it says why? Because former generation, they asked the same questions and they lost their faith. So the Quran forbid you from asking questions about the faith. You can ask silly questions like, uh, should I shave my underarm? As long as the question is silly, those are questions are welcome. The second you ask a serious question, those questions are bad. Why? The Quran yes, explains. it's true. Yeah, because if you ask those questions, the Quran explain people will leave their religion can somebody question how Muhammad he went to heaven in few hours and came back you cannot you have to accept can you ask why even we are kissing the black stone if we are not pagan you cannot ask you just do it you know you say we believe we surrender to Allah we don't uh, we don't go by logic we don't go by why and you know we don't ask Allah how we do that and why we do that uh, can somebody ask why Muhammad he have a privilege of sex? No, you cannot. He's a prophet. He's above all of us. So he have a privilege. Why we can have four wives because he can have unlimited? Well, we cannot. He's a prophet. Come on. You cannot do that. And if you ask, you might kill you. So this is what Islam is about. Ask not because if you ask, you will lose your faith. And this is what happened to you. You start asking yeah. questions and Islam predict that those who ask questions, they will 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 you know will will lose the religion. Because Islam cannot answer the questions. Otherwise, why people will lose religion? Why they will lose their faith if they ask questions? My dad found my dad found that my questions are too much, and he was like, "Go watch that." I don't know his name is Ahmed Dirad or something like this. Yeah. It was like. He, he debates a lot of Christians and he 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 win them or whatever. But people prove to me that he's lying a lot. And I watched some videos Ahmed of Didat, him as like example, lying. As an example, Ahmad did that once he was debating a Christian <laughs> and he made fun of him. He says, your Bible says that God, he created the sun uh, in Wednesday. Uh, but this is what Muhammad said. <laughs> You know, so yeah. uh, so this is what the Muslim they do. They go to someone, he do not know Islam, so they can uh, attack. You know, and the other person he will not be able to answer back. As you see, he made fun. The video is there. Your God, how how the earth was without light, all this. But the Bible says, in the beginning, God he created light. He said, let be light, even if there is no sun yet, but light is exist, and he called light day. So the that is a liar. Secondly, as you see, here is the hadith in front of us, and this is Sahih. Muhammad he said, Allah created the the earth, the, uh, the sorry, the dirt in Saturday, and the mountains in Sunday, and the trees in in, in Monday, and the, the the evil in Tuesday, and the, the light in Wednesday. But this is exactly what the that was attacking the Christian with. But this is what his prophet teach. So the that can make can look like he is smart because simply the other opponent the Christian is debating him he is ignorant so they can look look like they are they know you do not know how to answer him but if the dad is talking to me I will make him shish kebab in two seconds yeah. I have a question for you like do you think that those uh, debaters like those Muslim imams or whatever they know the truth do you think well you know you see when the Muslim wants, they ask an, an Imam and they insist to get the answer. His name is Yasser Qali. They ask him if the Quran, if we give you a plain papers and we ask you to write the Quran again, is it going to be different? He said those questions should not be asked in public. Brother, don't ask those questions. Oh, they those, know. So, yeah. So, they knew, but in public, they don't want people to speak about, about it because this will be embarrassment and will cause people to leave Islam. So but they, then if so they, they know, knew, why they are they still... It's a business. Why, why are they still... It's a business. Believing. Do you know how much oh, money yeah, they are making sense, from, make... from this business? You know? Makes sense. Makes a sense. lot of money. I mean, they are rich. They are filthy rich. You know? Like here, look, in, in YouTube, I cannot even take donation. Why? YouTube always side with the Muslims against us. I cannot even keep my videos. I have to delete them every few days. Why? Because you will never find one Muslim channel... YouTube taking their videos down. Me, I cannot yeah, I saw, keep my I videos. Saw, like, 
I saw one like uh, like uh, maybe three days ago or something. You had like a live and you showed that uh, there is like some higher governmental. Yeah, the like, Pakistan. They... Yeah, Pakistan. They, yeah, they banned my books from Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, and they banned my link actually, my videos. Uh, yeah, but it, this is what Islam is about. Islam is Islam need protection. Without protection, Islam is dead. This is why you see the Christians here in the chat always they say, Islam without lies, dies. I don't know how many times you heard it. Islam without lies dies. So in order to keep Islam living, we lie to ourselves. We say, oh, Islam is strong. So why you don't allow the Christian to preach the gospel in your country if Islam is strong? Why you don't let people to hear the same as they allow you to hear here? You come here, you build a mosque, you do whatever you want. Nobody kill you, nobody go after you. You are even allowed to go and even you insult Christianity in the street and nobody hurt you. Can we do the same? in morocco in algeria we have, no. we have we have my neighbors there is one christian guy his family came from lebanon yeah. and he study in our school and you know like uh <clears throat> arab schools they teach uh, uh islamia mm -hmm. like uh, as a subject yeah and he's forced to study it although he's christian and his family like already like told the school and everything but still he has to take that yeah it's okay you know, like, I, I studied islam so now islam i conquer islam you know <laughs> did not work for their benefit <laughs> the muslim they wish like, the muslim now they wish i never studied islam right they, yeah, they wish yeah they made a mistake actually the caliphate omar when he occupied jerusalem he forced the christians in in the in the pact of omar you can go read it that Christians should not teach their children Islam. Why? Because they don't want the Christian children to know how evil Islam is. So he forbid them. It's against the law to teach your children Islam. If you ask yourself why, I mean, come on, you should be happy that we are teaching Islam. No, because if they teach Islam, then they will be able to refute Islam. They will be able to destroy Islam. We want them to stay ignorant about what Islam is about. Not only that, you know, uh, 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 for me, what wake, woke me up is that when you talked about slavery, when you talked about like Muhammad, when he took that woman, what's her name? And he like killed her family and then Sophia. Uh, he raped her basically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I never heard those stories. They never told, tell you those stories. Yeah. Like they just be like, oh, God you, is. But did you God check them out yourself? Everyone, you have to. Uh, uh, did you check out the stories after you heard them from me? Because maybe Christian Prince is not telling the truth. Did you check them out? Uh, look, you showed the uh, like the things here. And exactly, um, I show it on the screen, and I I post, I, I I post would, the link. I look, and I post the link. Yeah. I yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't even like say it's lie to be honest because yeah. I know I know I know yeah. like. You wouldn't be lying to be honest. Why would you even lie? Like no, I show it in the screen. This is the Islamic website. That's not our website, right? Everything we show exactly. is in the screen. That's why the Muslim they hate what I do because I show the evidence. I'm not making a speech showing myself in the camera where people they can say, Oh, it's lying, it's not true. We are showing anything we say in the same spot immediately, not even next year, next tomorrow, right away. We spoke about it, we show it in the screen. And this is why they cannot refute us. But I'm so happy for you, my sister. Oh, and uh, thank you. let me know anytime your dad, you want to speak to me, I will be happy. You know, I don't, by the way, I don't open my Skype unless I am live. So if you try to, I call, know, I know. Yeah, if you try to call me and I am not live, my Skype will always will be off. You will see only Skype on, only when my, I am I'm, I'm live. So you can tell me, uh, like, you know, you want to bring your dad. And anytime, anytime I'm live. I will be happy to speak to your father. And if you have a question anytime about Christianity, I will be happy to hear you. And I will be happy to invite you to know the truth and to see the light and to know Christ. His name Thank is Thank you so much. His name is amazing. My, my 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 sister, my little sister, I am assuming that you are young, uh, uh, you know, knowing Christ is the best gift I can give you. I can give you. I'm not... I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I cannot offer more than the best I have. And the best I have. Well, is you offered a lot, like with your answers, like you offered already a lot. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.
Well, I, I will I will leave you now and I will yeah I will I will try to um, find a, a time and yeah I will try to invite my dad to talk to you all right well thank you and God yeah. bless you and we will pray for you thank you very much yeah thank you thank bye you bye. Take, take care bye bye take care and don't forget to open the website I just gave you about the Christian uh, let me actually share the West website with everybody have a beautiful songs in Morocco but all of them they are made by ex-Muslims Christian songs made by ex-Muslims from Morocco you can open it and you can enjoy the songs there now for sure the tone the music is a Middle Eastern style but the words are really you know and as you see like even you know what what happens sometimes that even those who leave Islam, because they use the to use the word Allah, still they are, you know, we are trying always to make those who leave Islam stop using the word Allah. Allah is not our God. Is not. Allah is a word contained two words, Al and La. La is the moon God. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but it's going to happen. Anyway. I think we have more than enough for today. Uh, if you like what we do here, don't forget to subscribe. And you can join us always in our channel. Invite your friends. Uh, if you are a Muslim, you like to call me, please let me know. Uh, always we open our Skype when we are live. And I would be happy. If you are a sheikh, if you know a sheikh, please invite him. I'm sure even the Muslim will be interested to see a speech or talk, a dialogue between two people, both they claim that they have knowledge. So if you have a sheikh, he claim, and I claim, then people will be able to judge to see who knows and who don't. And the one who cannot answer, obviously he is following the false god. So we are Christians, that means we are victorious. And our victory is not about defeating Muslims, no. As you see, how beautiful to speak to this sister. We don't hate Muslims, and we will never hate them. The victory we speak of is saving them, not hating them. This is why I say to her that the best is about our God, that God is love. God is love. While they think about God as someone scary, you know, in for us as a Christian, the for, most important thing that God is love. And those who live in love, they live in God and God live in them. Nothing can be compared to the teaching of Christ and his love. So I want to say thank you all. Don't forget, I delete my videos. So if you are interested, download them. Like this video will take maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes to be able to download. But in day to days, you will not see it no more. So download it, post it on your channel if you care. And if you are interested in certain part of the conversation, you can always cut the video and repost again. I pray to all of you to be in good health and wealth. I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of Muslims. We pray to the family of this wonderful lady, smart lady. Who Muhammad he claimed that women are half a brain but as you see the half a brain is the one who made such a statement half a brain is Muhammad who he said women they will go to hell because of menstruation who speak always against women but yet he promised Muslim they will have a lot of women even Muhammad he claimed that women they approach in the image of the devil and they live in the image of the devil so how they are in the image of the devil, but you promise us devil in heaven, which means women, a lot of them. How they are evil, how they are shaitan, how they are the source of evil. And then you promise us that our reward will be a lot of them. How they can be the source of going to hell, and yet they are the reward. Muhammad obviously is the devil. The one who say a woman she come in the image of a devil, he is insulting his mother. Which one of you he dare Muslims to put a sign in the top of your mother grave 
or your mother bed say the statement Muhammad said women approach in the image of the devil and retires in the image of the devil who of you dare to make a sign in the living room so your mother she can see it every day who of you dare shame on you that is the image Muhammad trying to make the women look like yet he have tons of them in his house he want to sleep with all of them but yet they are the devil the fact is he is the most devilish satanic person ever you can imagine this is why the Lord he said from their fruits you shall know them and if you want to know who is Jesus go check his fruit if you want to know who is Muhammad go check his fruits and you'll be the judge just be honest thank you may the Lord bless you all and I hope tomorrow I will be able to come live again so don't forget to subscribe invite your friends your family if they care to know and say thank you for being here this is your brother Christian Prince was serving you humbly for today thank you God bless